ants, and there's no cute fluffy panda face. You know what I mean? No. It's just this like harsh little ant mandible Dude. face, and you've got millions of people to fall in love with them. That mm -hmm. photo that went viral like maybe six months ago, I sent it to you. It was like that crazy extreme close up of the ant's face. Oh, I saw oh, that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dude, I was like, had no idea. It's like an alien. It's got yeah. hair on it. What yeah. is it, a mammal? Yeah. It's, it's this crazy. Yeah, dude, it's not it's, a mammal, in case you were actually asking for real. It's yeah. an insect. Yeah. <laughs> Just to confirm. An you, bring up, you bring up hairs, mammal. and like, there's some ants that, like, there's a cool purpose for those hairs. Like, trap tail ants, Tell us. their jaws, right? Open, what, 180 degrees? Okay. Some even more. But they have these trigger hairs within their mandibles that once they're touched, the jaw automatically just like smacks shut. Oh, you're kidding. Boom. Oh, like I'm a serious. crocodile. Like a yeah. 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 Huh. As, as a matter of fact, I think here in Florida, there's a few species. How many species of ant are there? Do you know? I won't lie. I haven't educated myself That's okay. that far, but like there's always new species being discovered. Yeah. That um, makes sense. The, that makes sense. And like, I mean, from what I know, there's, there's just a lot. What's your <laughs> favorite, what's lot. your favorite type of ant? Ooh. The one that gives him candy for breakfast. No, is it like a <laughs> carpenter it? ant? Those little shitty red ones? I hate the red ones. The oh, little the red tiny ones are my favorite. No, I'm really? joking. No. <laughs> ah, got me. Yeah, no. You should cover yourself in some red ones while we're here. Yeah. Oh, oh, God. Yeah. No, no uh, I think leaf cutter ants, at least from oh, what I yeah, eat, dude. leaf cutter ants are my favorite. Those there's, are there's just one. Like, they were in South America. I, I got to visit South America because they live in the trees, like super high up in the trees. You must. And they... There are also trap jaws. They live in the trees, not like normal trap jaws, which live in the ground. But these guys, when they fall off trees, they can use their head to glide back to the tree. No way. Yeah. They no, it's like the bird out. tricks. Yeah. Their heads. Yeah, it's their like bird flat. tricks over there. <laughs> just gliding all their over. Their heads the flat, and it's like triangular shaped. Wow. And so they just they just use it and just glide back, and they'll wow. just land on the tree. All right, I, I, I'm gonna tell a story. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna try and keep it short, and I want you we'll to see. tell me at the end of the story. <laughs> shut up. I want you to tell me at the end of the story <laughs> to rank my buddy, who I'm telling the story at his expense, Nick, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the worst possible and 1 being not that bad, uh -huh. friend level. Okay? I'm going to fast forward the story. Costa Rica, a okay. couple buddies, everybody's cruising around, pranks are getting out of hand. Okay? It starts with, like, totally harmless pranks, like one guy's, like, you know, unzipping the other guy's tent or hiding his shoes. It escalates really, really bad to the point where our buddy Mike – Sticks mangoes into my buddy Nick, Nick Mancuso. Like the into pod, him? Into his shoes. Oh, okay. You know, just into yeah. his hiking boots. Making sure. And then, you know, Nick has these sticky mango filled hiking boots for the <laughs> remainder of the trip because he stuck a bunch of mushed mango in. Yep. So Nick loses his temper and he's like, I'm getting fucking Mike back. Finds a bullet ant. Oh, no. no. Puts it in a vial and is like, all right, I'm going to get him. Okay. Back in San Jose at the end of the trip, he pulls this bullet ant out, lets it go in Mike's bed in, in his hostel. Everybody goes to bed, lights off, whatever. A couple hours go by. Fuck! You know, lights flip on, sheets are ripped <laughs> off. And Mike, like, we think Mike's actually going to die. Like, the <laughs> scream level and the pain level, like, like we're thinking he's, like, going to die. Sure. And so Nick obviously does not own up to this. He's, like, instantly goes, I think he might have told this story on the pod. He goes fully I never, quiet. I don't remember this story. Oh, it's hilarious. He's like, oh, <laughs> shit, man, I don't know. Must have snuck in here on someone's backpack, you know, like. <laughs> Acting all surprised, like, yeah. oh, my yeah, God. Because so he's, he's like, Mike's actually going to physically kill me <laughs> if he finds out. <laughs> yeah. It takes two years until at a drunken pool party, the story comes to fruition that that was actually uh, Nick's fault. His yeah. Prank on Mike. And Mike, to this day, he's like, I'm actually going to kill you, Nick. Like, he's like, just, I want you to know. <laughs> one like, day. One day it's coming. And Nick's yeah. terrified. Like, I don't think they've hung out in over two years. I'm not joking. Really? Wow. Anyway, so a bullet ant a bite is like a 10 out of 10. They call, it, the a they call it a bullet ant because it's supposed to hurt as much as being shot by a bullet. Damn. Um, tell me, on a scale of 1 to 10, how terrible of a person is Nick Mancuso? <laughs> <laughs> Nick. Yeah. Oh man. That that was that was messed up. I'm not gonna lie. Off of mangoes? <laughs> from mangoes to mango, mango feet, from dude. Mangoes to a bullet. Mangos that's nuts. <laughs> that that's taking <laughs> it overboard. <laughs> it's the next level. It's oh taking it to the next level gosh. for sure. Jeremiah, dude. thanks for coming on the yeah. podcast. Yeah, man. Yeah, what you do is super cool. Everybody Thank you. check it out. The uh uh lights camera ants. It's fun to say. Lights yeah. camera yeah. ants. Lights camera ants. Yeah, thanks, buddy. Dude, thank you so much for having me nice on. Have nice to have an amazing day. Ah, oh, thank you, man. Sweet. I'm gonna take a quick right. piss. I'm gonna take a quick right. piss. Yeah. I'm gonna go pee. So, uh, go what happened over there uh, when I went off stage? Tell just, us. just so I can take uh, own what just happened. As I was trying I need to, to talk to Kyle about something, but keep telling tell the audience nonetheless. As I was trying to set up the monitor so that everybody here could hear better, I cut the power to the live stream. 
and we had to start a whole fucking new one. So. Oh, you're kidding. I swear to God. Why did you let him touch it? Why did you let him? Producer I Kyle did. I'm an oaf. Why did you let him fucking touch the tech? I'm an oaf. Uh, he, uh, yeah, he has big feet, and he just kind of tripped over. It was unbelievable. And, uh, I, I almost left the convention. So correct. I told Kyle he needs to give me. Are you me hearing this? He cut the power to the live stream. No, don't with tell his him. I, no, he's he's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> he can he can That's kill you with his glare. Uh, yeah, no, so I've been having, we're back up and running. It's, yeah. it's all, all we're good. back up and running, but okay. we ha we had about uh, fourteen thousand people on the live 000. stream, and now it's no, at about no, forty. So. so please <laughs> tell your friends <laughs> yes, to join. Yep. Kyle has posted a link to ever, the new link. We have to do a new link. Yep. To get there. If you're here, you're halfway through the day. Got it. Right. Okay. And well, by the way, Bill. I blame Billy. I think uh, yep. I need to talk to Kyle about something quickly, and then let's bring on our next guest, and hopefully Patrick. You're just gonna comes leave back. me up here alone? No, I'm staying right here. Just give me a second. <laughs> what the hell is this? Like, what kind of a person <laughs> does a rant. show, and he's just like, oh yeah, here. By the way, talk talk to people in the audience. Thank you for being here, everybody. It's uh, I can't believe that you guys have been here the whole show. By the way, thank you. Um, hello back there. How you doing? So Are that, 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 that's Peter. He's coming on the pod right now. Yeah, I know. That's what I figured. I, that's why I wanted to say hello. He's coming. I could tell by his disinterest in what I'm talking about right now that he's never heard the podcast. Um, yeah, this is crazy. Good. That's good. Thank I need somebody okay. to talk to. Right. Peter, like, I can't up. just. Come on up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Relax. Calm all down. right. All right. Here you we know, go. We're not exactly good at this. It's, uh, we're learning. Well, his right. name is Peter. My name's Peter. And I'm he's happy Australian, about that. So he's the much cooler version than you. What's right. up, buddy? Good name. Good to see you. How you doing? How you been? Peter, Peter. Yeah, Peter, Peter. Must be a top bloke. Yeah, <laughs> baby. Like he's Peter. awful. I can't no, you're say awful. Yeah, Quiet awful. down. No, he's awful. All right, ask I'm a awful. question. A Do something person. useful. You. Peter, welcome to our show. This Thank is the you. Wild Times podcast. It's uh, undeniably the smallest podcast in the entire world. No, it's not. <laughs> um, it's a tiny. Ooh, he's got a special. big banner. We do have a big banner. Tell us about yourself. Tell everybody, like, you're Australian, your background. Wow. That means all your stories are cooler. Like, give us the full deal. Jeez, jeez, yeah. Okay. Oh, well, uh, obviously, I'm Australian, a little bit slower than most, and um, <laughs> I've got to speak a little bit slower so the Americans can keep up, right? There you go. Absolutely. Smart. We Smart. do yeah. speak very quickly. You've um, got a beautiful accent. <laughs> thank you. Thank you're welcome, you. welcome, Peter. It's romantic, Peter's. isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Uh, so, so basically, uh, I'm a reptile keeper. So my background comes from keeping animals. Yep. Um, and and that's really it. You know, and it, it turns from a really early point of life. Basically, you know, finding animals, the gateway moment, falling in love, sure, learning more about nature before you can actually learn about the animals that you particularly want to keep or maintain in captivity. So it's all about learning everything. So the pyramid of life, basically, whole ecosystems, the whole lot. Where in Australia did you grow up? So basically, I grew up in, just outside of Sydney, so in the, okay. in the suburbs, basically. Uh -huh. Yep. But my grandfather owned a, a big block of land out in the bush. But I think a lot of people don't realize that even in Sydney, you get brown snakes, tiger snakes. Oh, yeah. Like they're they're like in your local parks. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's suburbia. So yeah, yeah can they you love explain suburbia. that a little bit? So basically, uh, venomous snakes in Australia inhabit everywhere that humans like to inhabit. Right. We like to share the same habitats. Well, humans bring pests like rodents and things yep. and then the Hang snakes toads. come in. Yeah. You know, it's not like here like you don't you don't run into a rattlesnake at a park in Los Angeles. I do and I You have. don't. No, not at like downtown. No, not at downtown. In downtown Sydney you can run oh, into yeah. a brown snake. Yeah. A brown snake, yeah. which is much yeah. worse. Yeah. Much way. worse. Yes. Sorry, please continue. I'm going to say very much worse. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's it's one of those things. So wherever the humans are, the reptiles going to be. Yeah. And unfortunately, you know, in Australia we like to build on swamps too, so we're impinging on their environments. Yep. And it's crazy to say, but people are really amazed that there's snakes yeah. just pop up in their backyard, you know, it's <laughs> suburbia, but they're popping up everywhere. And I mean, like everywhere, it's a big march of progress, huge areas getting developed all at once, and yeah. the animals have got nowhere to retreat. All right, are do me a favor, yell, because I can't hear shit over that I know, right it's now. bad. We're working no? on the speaker. Scream. Yo! No, yeah, no, baby! Good. Uh, stop it. You stop it. Uh, are you still in Sydney? Area? Yes, I, I live north of Sydney now, so I'm on the central coast. Okay. I bought a block of land about 25 years ago. Yeah. I own eight acres. And you've been building out a forest. reptile thing, right? Basically, yeah. yeah. So basically, I've built everything there from scratch. And being very fortunate, like I said, I live in a rainforest. Yeah. And got to be very careful of all the particular species that I work with now. Sure. Because of the rainforest. You know, we get annual rainfalls of uh, 2.4 meters. So oh I guess for the Americans, it's eight feet. That's a lot of like water. That. So annually, you get that. I mean, recently, with. El Nino or El Nino or whatever his name was, he came, <laughs> visited, and we got flooded, like really big floods. Like yeah. got triple the amount of rain in the shortest period of time. 
causing a lot of havoc. Obviously, got flooded in a few times, lost power and all the rest of it. Oh, wow. So you've got to be a bit reliant when you're building outdoor enclosures about the environments we're sort of using them in and trying to replicate environments the animals don't live in. So we're trying to replicate nature where it shouldn't be. How very tricky How many sometimes. animals do you have on your property? Uh, that I keep? That you keep, yeah. Obviously not wild. It's a trick a question. Model, um, model wild. Depends, <laughs> depends if we're talking or I'm telling my wife. So sure, yeah, 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 right? yeah. <laughs> but um, I keep a lot of animals, yeah. I keep yeah. a lot of animals, probably um, close to probably 600 maybe That's more. That's a lot of animals. That's So you, do you have a full-time staff there? You must. Full-time staff is myself and my wife. Yeah, That wow. is it. Feeding is and it? cleaning all those Feeding and cleaning. Cages. And the worst part is I actually do all my feeders as well. Oh, you're kidding. Yeah, so I elevate that stress level and the, wow. you know, a bit of everything. So I produce all <laughs> wow. my own food. So wow. you, you have a... Uh, that you, means you're breeding mice, rabbits, you're doing it all. Yeah. And, and you do you do kind of document just what you're doing in your daily life on your YouTube channel, which is called Criticam? So yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. So, yeah, I do some of that, but I also try to improve animal welfare in captive conditions. I mean, we all know that we used to do things 20 years ago and very different sort of that's for skills sure. and technology. Yeah. yeah. And we've got to try and go back to nature and try and adapt more of that. Yeah. So there's no reasons why we can't bring more nature into captivity and into your enclosures, regardless of whatever species you're keeping. Just it's to do it, you got to do it right. the right that's way. Right. Yeah. That's right. And there's, there's so many things that we can look at. You know, you can. I always call it the keeper and the kept. What's beneficial for the keeper might not be beneficial for the kept. Absolutely. Right. Fortunately, I think there's a big sort of gap between those two topics. And you know what's funny? Sure. I, I find that like difficult myself. Like I grapple with that, and I'll give you an example. Like I have this beautiful 55-gallon aquarium in the corner of my office, and it's like set up perfectly. All the plants are flourishing, the discus are in it, and I want to keep certain animals in there. And I, I've made these mistakes, and I, I, I refuse to make them anymore. But my emotional being is like, oh, I really wish I could. I'm just making this up, but like throw my Fly River turtle in there. Yeah, right? you have the emotional yep. being of a three-year-old. You be quiet. Um, <laughs> and uh, you know, and the pH is wrong because there's so much plant yeah. growth in there, and they want you know they want highly acidic water and blah blah blah. And so it's like, but you look at it and your emotional goes, it's perfect. Yeah. Like it looks great. It's a healthy ecosystem. I should put this animal in there, but it's that's what's good for me because I want it on that display and to yep. look beautiful. Yep. It's not what's best for the animal. That's right. You know, the animal's better off in a different part of the office in a different tank. Blah 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 blah. Yeah. And it's like different I, everything, I yep. grapple with that, and my I I care more about animals than just you know not more than you, but then more than most, most people, people. Yeah, that's right. Right, and uh, and I at the same time I personally grapple with it. I'm like I wish I could just. It's like should I do it? Should I try it? No, don't do that. Mm -hmm. Like that's the wrong thing to do for the animal, even if it's what. So I simple to do, but isn't it? So, so simple. simple. To, so yeah, simple. You know, you're talking about literally picking something out and plopping it in over yeah. there, and then it's like, oh, now it looks nice. I mean, the simplest thing I can pick on, and I mean, it's no picking on any particular products and stuff. Yeah. Is you're putting plastic plants in an enclosure and then you're adding heat. Right. Right. Plastic and heat releases toxins. Of course, tons of them. And then we wonder why we animals aren't doing and it as what, well as they should be. And it's what every single enclosure basically with reptiles or fish in the world yep. has it's, plastic it's, it, it's an interesting thing too because not only does kind of learning how to put yourself in the animal's shoes help you take care of animals that you're raising it yep. really like helps in life because people don't really do that with other people you know so it's, it's hard to like put yourself in the in the in the shoes getting, of this getting very meta What's that? Know. He's getting very meta. He is, yeah. Philosophical. I like it. I like it. It's, it's a different saying, look for him. It's hard. It's hard it to you, be it empathetic. <laughs> Take yeah. it. From, us, from Peter, one Peter us Peters to get it. Yeah. yeah. Us Peters get it. Yeah. yeah. yeah get that. Bro. Peter, do you? Um, how long have you been doing this on online? You've obviously, I know, four decades. You've been working with animals, but yep. so how long have you actually been putting out media and? Uh, online presence has probably been since 2012, somewhere around there. Oh wow. Okay. I don't really have a big platforms like everyone else, but for me, it's it's about sharing the passion and my love for the animals yeah. Yeah. and exposing other people that share similar passions and loves. And I get to travel the world, see some really cool collections. You do some very see some amazing stuff. Last year, we were on a travel panel together. Yes. I don't know if you recall that, but- uh, He doesn't. You, yeah, all the good stuff. Can He's a Peter, I know, I can read his I mind. I would so, so love to just replace- That guy? Him. <laughs> With anybody. anybody, not just you, anyone. Just a random no, plan. Fair um, enough. No, wow. Tell us about some of your travel stuff. Like you get to do. I was just gonna say you. Some of your stories from last year were fantastic. Like just tell our audience about one of your favorite recent trips. Okay, so my recent trip. Well, it is very recent. So two weeks 
I spent two weeks in South Africa. I went home for two days in Australia, and then I came here. Okay. And I landed here last Saturday. Okay. So in the last two weeks, my time zones are a bit all over the place. Yeah. My brain's a little bit scrambled because of the time zones and sleep patterns. It's, sure. It's a little bit weird. But so I went to South Africa. Now, I've been there three times now. This is the third time. And the third time was probably the most emotional time I've ever had. Tell us. Why is that? So I got to spend some time with Dingo. That's pretty emotional, as we know. <laughs> yeah. um, and enjoyable. Dingo Dinkleman? The yeah. yeah, yeah, old Dingo Dinkleman. So we actually you went know, out. You know a lot of other Dingoes? Yeah. Just yeah. Dinkleman. Okay. <laughs> I was about to say, I don't, many Dingoes steal babies. But I know you're talking about the animal. You'll steal your whole lifestyle. But yeah. <laughs> anyway. So anyway, we went to uh, South Africa, and we actually participated in a couple of rhino dehornings, right? So the first time I went to Africa, I had a bit of a spiritual moment where we got to walk up on rhinos about four meters amazing, away. Huh? It is just yeah. the next level, right? To think that people are hunting these animals and it's a helpless it's animal, it's a dinosaur. Understand. It's yeah. unbelievable. It's an absolute dinosaur. It really is. And I mean, me coming from a different continent, obviously, it really opened my eyes about what's really happening. Mm. And I mean, in that trip, I was fortunate enough to meet a lot of rangers and see a lot of things and it really sunk in deep. This time I went there and I knew that what we were going to do, right? So we went out with this big team. They go out with the helicopters. And there must have been about 30 people involved in this whole big, big process. Mm -hmm. Went out, we dart this rhino, they drop it. They check it over, do all the bits and pieces, take DNA samples. Yep. Wow. So yeah, they take DNA samples, they take the horn. They actually do a DNA referencing so they can check which horns come from which animals in case they yep. ever get out there. I, I've, d I've actually done yep. quite a lot of so, it. Yep. I'm familiar with so it. So it, yeah. was, it, was really, it was really interesting to see that. And I, I mean, I felt so sorry for the animal. Had to be Stressful. disfigured. Yeah. Stressful. Stressed. Yeah. yeah. And, and yet it is by far the, the, the lesser of a yeah. much greater evil. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, to me, that was, I really felt in that moment. Yeah. But there was a team of 30 or 40 people there, right? Then the next time we did it was another game reserve. Dingo's friends. Yeah. Helicopter went up. There was just us, and a vet, and two or three other guys. Yeah. Very different feel. Yeah. yeah. Very close. Same thing, right? So we, we dart the rhino. He goes down. We go over, cover his eyes, and then we dehorn him. And as soon as the vet dehorned him, he handed me the horn, and it hit my hand, and I'm gonna tear up right and, now. And you're yeah, and you're and, like, and you feel it. And yeah. It, yeah. It, it, it's hard to believe that that this chunk of toenail is worth that animal's life. That's uh, not just worth its life, but worth somebody's oh yeah multiple lifetime salary. Yeah. And all over keratin. It's all the over most fingernail. expensive commodity on earth. Right. It's and it crazy. comes at a cost. Right. Yeah. And I mean, it's not always nice and clean. It's no. they, yeah. they just get hacked. And yeah. To me, I just. I mean, as, as anyone should, they broke down and cried, you know? Yeah, yeah. no, it's, it's, so, it's just horrific. So you're dehorning them s to keep them safe from poachers. Yeah, so it's removing the amount of horn that's otherwise. exposed. Correct. So obviously when they go out, they're going to pick one with the biggest horn. But also, we actually put collars on their feet. Yeah. So they've got these new collars, GPS locations, mm -hmm. they do yeah. heart rate monitoring, and they're all solar powered. Yeah. So, I, uh, wow. What it's are the nice horns? Amazing. level. And to your understanding, wh wh what are the horns then being trafficked for? What's the end product of the horns? The end product goes to the black market and is used in stick herbal pills. medicine and stuff like that. Stick yeah. pills. Chinese Basically yeah. Chinese, Chinese stick yeah. pills. That's what it is. I, uh, so I grew up in Southern Africa. Yeah, right? I, I grew up in Zimbabwe. Yeah. And I grew up around big game because my family ran safari businesses. And just two, maybe three years, two years ago now, we did this big elephant translocation. We moved 24 problem elephants. Yeah. And uh, it was all very like high octane, high action until it came to the bull. Yep. who was like super elusive. He was really hard to find. We finally found him, darted him, everything you're talking about. And we landed on the ground, crashed through the bush, you know, and like came in there. I pulled his trunk out from under him so because yep. they can only breathe through their breathe. trunks. Yep, yep. And uh, I put my hand on him. And it's funny because Same. I am an emotional person, but I don't cry a lot. I really don't. And uh, I put my hand on him and I looked into his eyes and he was asleep on the ground. And he let out this like, you know, and I felt it mm. come out of his trunk. And I like you can see the goosebumps yep. I'm getting thinking yep. about it now. And I had this lump in my throat that was bigger than anything I've ever experienced. And I literally, it was kind of fortunate because my camera again hadn't quite caught up to me, but I turned like this and I like sobbed myself. And I don't even know why. Like yep. I, it, nothing in that moment. There's that connection. Right, yeah. but it, it was something about looking into his eye as he lay there. Yeah. And like we got him and we were moving him and everything was going fine, but there was still so much stress level. It's not like the job was over. We hadn't accomplished anything. We hadn't finished what we'd started out to do. I don't even know what it was, but something in that moment when I put my hand on this big bull, I had this like emotional 
sort of breakdown. And it didn't last long. It lasted maybe 25 seconds where I was like, and then I like brought the camera guys over and I was like, Mitch, feel this, you know, so-and-so feel this, yeah. like experience this, like feel what I feel. It, it, they didn't have the same reaction I had, but something about that moment, it just snapped in me. And it's weird because I, our neighbors had a game farm. I used to ride elephants, not like the cruel way, like we'd swim with them in the dam <laughs> and stuff, you know, like we used to jump on them and play yeah. with them and stuff when we were kids. But nothing had ever compared to that single moment. moment. And I don't know what the buildup was, and I don't know why it never came back, but something in that moment just made me, like, break well, down. Well, I mean, think about what you, guys, what you guys are doing out here. I mean, you're, you're putting all of your focus, all of your energy and effort into what you're doing. I yeah. mean, like, this is a very important thing to you, and it's almost like that's the defining moment yeah. is yeah. when you touch that yeah. animal. You yeah. have that horn it's in 100% your hand. right. As soon as you put your hands on the animal and you can hear it breathe or feel it breathe and move, it's, it's, it's almost like you're absorbing energy. That energy. Yeah, it's true. And it, you, you can almost instantly feel how that animal's feeling, mm. you know? And mm. so, I don't know. It's very spiritual. It, very, it, got, it got to me big time. Absolutely. Yeah, so I'm happy to I admit mean, that, you know? You're essentially... Like oh, that, uh, th I mean, just like that is like when you touch the person you're in love with's hand for the first time, kind of thing. Like there's an energy exchange there, yeah. you know. And it's a lot hard of people to, hard to quantify. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, wow, this we're getting very like well, spiritual. Yeah. 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 yeah, not like uh, no, it's very different for <laughs> us. Uh, we're so all gonna cry. <laughs> Changing gears here just a little bit. So coming from Australia. Yep. Right. You don't have a lot of big animals, really. You know, you got kangaroos and things. There's a few introduced camels and water buffalo. Yep. But it's it, what is it like? Because for me, coming from Africa to America, I was like, Jesus, this place is empty. Yes. It felt empty. It felt yep. void of life. It's really not. You know, like you walk around Florida, there's critters everywhere. Lizards and snails but it's everywhere. it's not the same as all these big animals. What was it like for you going the other way? Like going from Australia to somewhere like South Africa where you're like, wow, there's a lot of big creatures around me. So, so the main thing that really stuck in my head, obviously Australia is known to have all the deadly stuff, right? Of course. We've got, we got deadly snails, we've got deadly jellyfish, everything. we've got deadly fish, we've got... Octopuses, spiders, yeah, octopus, you name spiders, it. Octopus, yeah. spiders, snakes, all the rest right? So these things are going to kill you, right? Yeah. You go to Africa, <laughs> these things want to eat you. Right. That's what I, I always, how many times have I said that but on the people, pod? People I'm like, Australians are full of shit. They're yeah. like, people everything don't wants understand to kill that. you. Australians Africa. are full of shit. Yeah, yeah. Wow. we're full of shit. I That's right. See, but Dingo's yeah. over there. Yeah, he's honest. He's being honest. No, I'm honest about it. But I mean, you go to Africa, and the, the first time I went out herping, go outside the fences, the electric fences and stuff, and then the ranger actually tracks you and hunts you down and goes, you shouldn't be out here. You need right, to get he's back. like, you're going to get killed You're going to get killed. I mean, you're so oblivious to it until you actually see it. And then you're like, hang on a minute. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to get killed. Yeah. That's the easy way out, right? Yeah. I'm going to get eaten. eaten. Right. Yeah. Eaten it does alive. It doesn't always right. end up with the killing. Right? Yeah. I can still be alive and still get eaten. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's it's sounds... so crazy. Because even like thinking about just going around in Kodiak Island or these places that, where there's a ton of brown bears. You can walk. But none of them yeah. want to eat you. Correct. Like there's, you're going to see Correct. them. You're going to interact with them. They're not going to, they don't want to eat you. Versus like the idea that lions are like, that's definitely food. Yeah, yeah. going in. I, I've yeah. tried to tell food. people this. Like yeah, when we worked in, in Booby Preserve, with it's got a super high density of lions. You cannot walk a mile. You cannot do it. It doesn't like you sure. won't make it. Yeah. Like I, it's like there's nowhere else in the world that's quite like that. Where it's like no, no, you don't understand. If you walk from here to there, you will not make it. You're right. And, and that's not back. like when you find <laughs> so the lions, crazy. you're like don't walk through the pride. It's like no, no. Anywhere in this bush, you will not make it one mile. Unbelievable. No, it's man. Hard, it's hard to fathom it, it, that. It's, it's very, it's it's very like difficult. Anywhere here, you're like, yeah, I'll yeah, you just go for a zip there. in the bush. Exactly. I mean, it's over here, I don't have a problem. I'd, I'd go through the bush, no worries. Right, over there, you're just like, no oh, well, hang on a minute. This when I go on a really hike <laughs> around here, very cautious. the scariest thing for me is ticks because they're going to make me allergic to red meat. I think you're thinking of L.A. Um, <laughs> Peter, let me ask you. We got a minute here. Good, Peter. Not. The, the Peter who's knowledgeable. Okay, yeah. That um, makes sense. <laughs> He's not what, here yet. Uh, <laughs> what's your bucket list wildlife animal adventure that you, you haven't done yet, but you're like, I, I'm going to do it? Haven't done yet. Oh, yeah. geez. Uh, obviously, like everyone, the kick, you want to go to Komodo. You want to sort of watch these animals and how they move around. And yeah, obviously, yeah. Galapagos, they're probably the two big ones. Those are big good big ones. Key items, yeah. Those yeah. are really good ones. Big prehistoric beasts, you know. Yeah. Sure. Literal Take dinosaurs. Literal oh yeah. dinosaurs. Yeah. Peter, thanks so much for coming on the podcast. Thank pod, you, Thanks, guys. Good to see you again. I think really you and I are doing very, some more stuff yeah. tomorrow. Um, love so, your yeah. tats, by the way. No worries, guys. I love your tats. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah.
This oh. is an important job for you. Yeah, Thank you. Me yeah. too. That's, as that's well. you opening. Am I opening them? For me. Roger, Everybody. Roger. Yeah. Roger Dodger. All right. Thank Where's you, Peter. Our next guest? All right. Chris Gillette. Chris Gillette. I see him over there hulking. He's carrying a tiny dog. We're working on getting a monitor for you guys. It's coming soon. It'll be here tomorrow. Oh, we got an opener in the oh, audience. Oh, he's got an opener. Wow. Thank you. He can't display his his manliness. Thank you. Fat Tire. Thank you, man. Thank you, and thank you, Fat Tire. All right. Next guest coming in hot. Hulking. Look at Chris these triceps. Wait, might, oh, my might goodness. Want a beer. Chris, do you want a beer? Would you like a beer? Oh, no, thank you. No, you wouldn't like a beer. Are you kidding me? Chris got that physique by drinking Look beer. Look at this physique, dude. This guy is ripped. What's going on, man? It's been a minute. How are yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, all right, ladies What's and gentlemen. What's up, man? How you doing? Hey, how you doing, guys? Yeah, sure yeah. You do. Peter. Okay. Um, all right. Well, Chris, we, we talk about Chris a lot on the podcast. We do. We really do. I, I feel like I bring him up all the time. You guys have, like, met him like that guy him. that I kind of wish I was more like him. Yeah. You <laughs> You're that guy for us. Yeah. I so, just yeah. met you, and I wish I was like you. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are making me blush, please. Uh, Chris, it's always good to see you, bud. Yeah, thanks for having me over here, man. What's going on? How's um, life? Good, good. I don't know if you saw I bought 40 acres. I was going to get into that next. Yeah. We're yeah. about. Okay, That's... so hold on. Let's, set, let's, right. let's paint a picture here. Paint a yep. picture, okay. please. First of all, I know we've told the story on the pod before. Patrick's better at telling it. Explain your first time meeting and seeing Chris. Well, was that in L.A.? No, it was uh, at, oh, at, at his place. At the, at the Everglades Outpost. Yeah, right. yeah we went to the Everglades Outpost to, to film with, with Chris. Yep. He was cool enough to let uh, Andrew Uckels get in the pool with, Which was <laughs> with Casper. Never should have done that. Um, Wait, yeah. but that that's the funny. story in itself, because yeah. I have no idea what you're... Casper the ghost? Or Ca a Casper is a big alligator. Yeah, yeah the oh, gator. Okay. Yeah, oh, yeah. that's right. You is Casper still... Uh, okay, yeah, hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Time yes. out. Right, Patrick's being modest because he doesn't want to flatter our guests too much, but I, Patrick's told me the story. He's like, we walked into this place. It's like this crazy jungle-themed thing oh, yeah. and here's this like nine foot tall adonis standing yeah. there with his shirt off <laughs> yeah. with these alligators all by his feet and he's holding a giant staff like a uh, wooden staff yeah and patrick's like where have you taken me i was like oh yeah it's my buddy chris he's like is he part gorilla <laughs> it's like the opening of a movie yeah <laughs> i like that he's holding a giant staff. A staff yeah in forest mind he also had like flowing long hair he did at that, he, at that, he that time. oh yeah back <laughs> in the day back in the day but no but we went to the everglades outpost to film and it was one of the Coolest I had no idea it existed. I was I was like, how is this not the number one thing? Like you would think people would come here and then maybe go to Disney World. Right. <laughs> it was so right. cool. It's so cool. But anyway, but Chris, so you worked there for a long time. You yeah. used to do Gator Boys, the TV show, yep. um, and with Paul. Mm -hmm. And now, tell us about your recent venture. This is all really exciting. Yeah, yeah. So um, I've been fortunate enough to work with the Outpost for many years, but it's not my place, you know. Um, and so I just bought my own. And nice. uh, so I got 40 acres uh, two hours from here in kind of the Ocala area. Mm. Okay. And I'm starting my own sanctuary up there. I just broke ground this week on my first Gator Pond. So, Congratulations. Oh, awesome. Yeah, so hoping to have the largest uh, Gator sanctuary sanctuary for nuisance gators you know like casper is a rescue yeah, yeah. nuisance alligator that would have otherwise been shot and killed and we try yep. to give him a home instead and yep. do That's all kinds great. of crazy alligator stuff on this property that's you, the idea you're going to do a big clear pond like what casper has where yeah. you can interact with animals yeah oh yeah absolutely water and stuff. yeah right. you know you know i'm coming over oh yeah yeah, yeah okay yeah, yeah. Trust that me. was me when that time that you were like yeah forrest you're good get in there and i got to play with casper for an hour i was still to this day like one of my favorite interactions with a crocodilian i've ever had he's yeah it's so cool and it's like amazing and I've got some ideas to make it even more cool. I All like right. that a lot. Can, can you share them or not yet? Um, I don't want to, just in case anybody tries to steal Sure. Them, yeah, 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 yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. That's Is so, Casper going to come with you to the new uh, place? No, unfortunately not. He wishes. Yeah, I wish yeah. I could, but uh, no, he'll be he'll be staying there at the outpost. How, yeah. Is that like, like, I mean, how does that feel? Is that like lose, like a person that you're not going to see? I worked with them 15 years. Yeah. yeah how, so it's going to be sad. How long do crocodiles live for? Uh, well, it alligator. depends on who you ask. Alligators. Um, th they have some. Well, some people claim over 150. Some people wow. claim over 200. But yeah. that's where you believe in anecdotal things. Right. Sure. But right. then, if but just because somebody didn't go to university, and it, does that mean their knowledge is less? 
You know what I mean? No, when you, when you talk of to not. local Real people, world experience. Yeah, there's yeah. anecdotal locals who are very respectable and know more about their ecosystem than people across the ocean who think they know better. Right at all. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Right. Like, you we know talk, exactly what I'm talking talk about. We talk about that a lot. Yes, yeah. we do. Yeah. We probably talk so about we, it more we often than like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, talked about it today already. Yeah, people just poo poo anecdotal evidence yeah. and, and, you know, like local knowledge because it's not university based. I actually yeah. think that's that, that pendulum starting to swing a little bit. Yeah. I really do. I think people are starting to have a lot more respect for people that are constantly around the, their study subjects compared to, oh, I'm the world leading expert, but I've never actually seen one in the wild, Yeah, you know, which is a lot of people, or yeah. at least it used to be. Um, so you sort of, to me, you what you've done recently has like embodied the American YouTuber's dream. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> and what I mean by that is you and Gabby, your girlfriend, started your social media channels. They've gone bananas crazy they're doing super well you've made enough money off of those to now buy your own giant chunk of land and build your dream sanctuary yeah that's like the that's like the american youtuber's dream is it, it not it really is yeah i think everybody in this in this building today wishes they could do exactly what you guys have done and you can if you purchase my 29.95 oh. tutorial on how, how does, to build your audiobook. social media no. yeah. how, did, how did you get uh, started into this whole world i mean um, I mean, well, I mean, Forrest knows I used to be all photography. Yeah. I used to be an underwater photographer. An and amazing stuff. Yeah, crazy stuff. And I love photography, but all the apps move you towards video. You don't post it anymore, do you? Because there's no point. Crazy. The algorithm just murders it. And like, as much as I love photography, like I have barely even taken any photos in the past like two years because now everything is video. Yeah. But that movement yes. towards video led to monetization. Right. Yeah. So, Real. although I lament the loss of photography, I am thankful for the gain of monetization through videos. But so, so you, uh, when did you get into crocodilians? I mean, I'm born and raised in Florida. I, yeah. I grew up catching them, you know. Yeah. So, and, Chris, uh, Chris, if I may, catching them. if I may, like Chris, a, like when I met Chris back in the day, he had this incredible page of all these unbelievable photographs of bull sharks, hammerheads, tiger sharks, gators, mm -hmm. cottonmouths. Mm -hmm. And that's what he'd do. He'd go into the swamp or go offshore and just take unbelievable stills photography of these animals. Mm -hmm. And then how did so? And you you grew up basically doing that, right? Yeah. Like when you were mm -hmm. a teenager, you'd go run around the swamp and yeah. jump in. This was your life. Yeah, oh, that was my passion. I'm sure he'd harass stuff for. he wasn't supposed to. And yeah, we won't get into all of that. <laughs> the same shit we all did growing up, which is fine. It's how you learn. It's how you become passionate. Yeah. And uh, and then how did you? pivot that into what it is today. Your page today is like all amazing videos of you and Gabby playing with gators, basically. Was yeah. it the video that like took it to the next level once you started doing videos with the crocodiles, the alligators? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I mean, again, I, I just can't emphasize how much I love photography and how sad I am that it's basically dead on social media now. Yeah. But um, video absolutely catches more attention. It catches more eyes. I had a video uh, just a couple months ago. It's the most I've ever had. 220 million views on Holy one video. Holy crap. Up. What was the video? What is the video? Me underwater with uh, Casper the Gator. And it's just me doing a voiceover. I didn't. Even, I thought it was going to suck. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even think it was going to be yeah. a good video. because it, It's all underwater. And the underwater videos, I have to do a voiceover, obviously, because I'm right. holding my breath underwater. Yeah. And I'm like, nobody wants to listen to my voiceovers. <laughs> right. 220 million views later on that wow. one video. Where, where did it hit that? On uh, TikTok, um, YouTube? So that's just, okay, yeah. So that's that's just on one of my Facebook pages, 220 million. That's just on crazy. One of them. And then on the other Facebook page, I think it's got another 40 million. And then, um, yeah, so it, it's actually more nice. than that. I should have done how, how long is this video? Uh, it's a minute 30, if that. What's the... Uh, it's, it's just wild that yeah. that many oh, people... Wild I, I know. And, th and then look at, like, viewership on cable networks. Uh, yeah. Don't, oh, yeah. don't, 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 just let's, don't get me let's started. Look at, uh, let's look at viewership on Animal Planet. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> what, what is Animal Planet? Nobody None knows of us have is. jobs at yeah. this table. Oh, so my God. Don't even know. get me started. So we're all from a TV background. He's an editor. Yeah. Pat, as you know, is a producer. Yeah, yeah. You know, so we all have, yeah. It, don't yeah, fucking, it's not, don't even fucking not, get me not started. Not the same. No. Um, all right, so you got the 40 acres. Obviously, you got to build the infrastructure, the ponds, the pools, everything yeah. you're going to be doing. That's where we're at right now. Just gotcha. hemorrhaging money every day. Of course, Just Just right? Money. You, you probably have a, a handful of people working there on construction right now. Just you? You're doing it all no, I just got two new guys um, okay. that are helping me out right now. Thank God. But yeah, it's been a nightmare because I'm in the middle of nowhere. It's so oh, okay. hard to find Wait, help. Where is it? Uh, it's, well, technically, Interlochen. Exactly. 
It's an so, Enchilaken. It, yeah. It's uh, <laughs> it, it's actually yeah, I think it's German for land between lakes. Okay. And ah. So there's a bunch of little lakes around. So like Interlaken, Locken okay. Lake. Oh, that yeah. makes gotcha, sense. Gotcha. That makes sense. You know, but it's a little town nobody's ever heard of. You know. Okay. Um, but we're putting it on the map. <laughs> yeah, there yeah. you go. Do you, uh, so how many uh, animals do you got out there? Or are you um, planning so, on putting out there? Well, right now we just have mainly the rescue. Uh, so I was running a rescue out of a place I was renting in Deerfield Beach for years gotcha. and, and whatnot. So just all those rescue animals we brought over. But now that we have the space, we're expanding out. Um, so like right now, my quad money enclosure is almost done. Um, so I got four rescue quad Mondays coming in. Um, we got fennec foxes, uh, a bunch of smaller oh, so, stuff. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay, so you I, got oh, yeah, I rescue a, all kinds whole of whole variety. Anything that you, yeah, so it's so it's funny because there's there's a, a rescue near San Diego. It's a similar thing, right? It, they have a ton of fennec foxes there. Yeah, what they're is, terrible is it people pets. get them they're, as they're, pets? They're terrible pets. They're terrible pets. Okay. So, I mean, look at one. I want one, and okay. I know it looks like a Pokemon. Yeah. yeah. It's <laughs> unbelievable. You're like, what is yeah. this thing? It looks right. like a Pokemon. And right. then you get it, and it bites your earlobe off, like and a you're like, oh, animal. that's about I do. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and so they're like, we got to call somebody. You're like, yeah. How so do you bring them in. How do you do with the fennec foxes? Are, do you have you have multiples? We have two. Yeah. So you have two. Are they? Do they like hang out together? Yeah. Yeah. They are social. Okay, so thankfully so they are they're social. together. Um, but like uh, another one, we have rescue uh, prairie dogs. Same story. Yeah. People get they're adorable. People Cute. get them as a pet. That yeah, chews you up. No, um, so, so I feel like that dynamic, that style. Like, are they mustelid? They are mustelid, right? Uh, rodent. Are they a rodent? Yeah. Okay, yeah. But they're probably Nerds. a little better to interact with. Well, I would so think, than out of the three, one of them is super nice. Interesting. So Interesting. the other two, like, mm, yeah, yeah, I could see why they, <laughs> I could see why they dumped you. You know, I got two. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, that's I got two. My parents uh, feel that way about me. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I got two rescue pot belly pigs. Oh, nice. And, um, yeah, and you had one. Two. I had two. And one, one of them will like asshole. legitimately try to kill you. That's, that's yeah. really like legit. Reagan I mean, like was the worst. I wrestle this thing down, and it, I mean tusks, and like it tries to kill Jeez. me. Jeez. Like, the other one. Could the see other one's fine, right? Yeah, yeah, the other one's super nice, you know. Yeah, but yeah, I'm like, yeah. I know why they dumped you. Like, <laughs> yeah. <that thing's laughs> well, so at murder. the last place, you had you had tigers there. Didn't right. you have a tiger there? Um, at the out the outpost had a tiger. Yeah, yeah. But that wasn't my. Sable Forte. and Sable. Yeah, the, Sable's uh, one that I did raise her. Lion. Yeah, you raised her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's say someone calls you. Yeah. They're like, "Hey, Chris, made a big mistake. I got this tiger. Can you come get it?" Um, <laughs> we are having conversations about how to handle that. Gotcha. Because I'm, I don't want one. Right. I don't no. want a tiger. No. I don't. Honest to God, I don't want to deal with it. Um, yeah, you're I, Gator King, not Tiger. Yeah, King. I don't. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to deal with it. But then when I'm like, when I have 40 acres and I'm like. I have like a responsibility to save as many animals as I can, oh, and like that's I have what that I voice, say, and it's a fucking nightmare. Yeah, I get that voice yeah. in my head where I'm like, I have a responsibility because I have the ability to do this, and I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you gotta. I'm, I'm trying to move incrementally. Yeah. So yeah, like yeah. right now, like you know, we have uh, people try to bring animals to us all the time, and I'm I'm just like, no. Like we have to set up what we have and get everything up to where I want it to be yeah. before we can do that stuff. Yeah, you yeah. have to have you Makes have sense. to have boundaries so that you can benefit for the animals that are there. Yeah. I don't know if know? I I don't know if I told the story on the pod or not. I might have. But uh literally there was a lady who died on our road. Like you guys know my small little road in yeah. my house. Yeah. And was it Oprah? I've lived there negative. I'd lived there, you know, fifteen years. And she had, I don't know how I didn't know this, a toucan in her house. Did oh. I tell the story on the pod? No. And somebody oh. called me and go, hey, literally like nine houses down from you, there's a toucan that needs a home. And I called Chris and I was like, hey, so <laughs> the last thing in the world I want is a toucan, but there's a situation, blah, blah. And Chris was like, don't get really? a toucan. <laughs> yeah. Why? Bro. And, Worse okay. than a peacock? If you ever, if you ever see my videos uh, or if you read my comments, you'll see people like, oh, my God, he's so brave with the gators. And somebody will comment below, yeah, but you should see him with a toucan yeah. uh -huh. <laughs> because we have one. And that yeah. thing puts me in a corner. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Like, if it's close huh? enough to get you, it is faster than your reaction speed. Got it. Like, so if they, they just don't look like it's that. going to get you kellogg's and led like, me to believe that they're very friendly <laughs> and no fruity. they yeah, are fruity. certainly not and um <laughs> so like i've got i've got they're all soft bills so i've got two horn bills and a toucan and they have a pension for removing eyes and oh, they, they specifically God. go like my buddy have you, um, been, have you been hit like around the eyes you know justin justin Aguilata? Oh, I know who he is. Yeah, yeah. Right here. Oh, you're kidding. Bleeding. Oh, like, my I mean, God. right there just bleeding. You got to wear goggles. <laughs> Oof. And, I mean, Justin works with Venomous. Croc yeah, he's he, good. He, he's a bad dude, yeah. you know? Yeah. And he's fast. And it's still right there. And I'm like, oh. These <laughs> are some quick twitch, too. Yeah, they are yeah. Four yeah. movie dude. status yeah. going you know? on. So, so if I had got said toucan from the old lady that died, I'd have an eye patch on our podcast. Yeah, you would. Dude, I'm not that's sweet. a street cred, though. Yeah, you look super cool, bro. 
Uh, be like the but peaker. he can be sweet. I mean, I hold him now, and we're okay now. Like, when we first got him, uh, he apparently was kept by uh, some people, like, some guys that were mean to him, but he was fine with girls. So, like, uh, my girlfriend Gabby went in there and was, like, immediately picked it up and was fine. I was like, oh, cool. And I put my hand out, and that thing just grabbed me and almost took my fingernail right off. Like, I mean, and that's rightfully my first so. interaction with it. Guys yeah. are horrible. It's we're we're horrible. Can. So? It's no, the Fruit Loops bird. <laughs> it's the Fruit Loops bird. It's not bird. supposed to be taking your eyes. Your yeah, that thing's all beak, man. And that speaking of the fruit, beak, yeah. those things just inhale fruit and then just blast it out the that, other end. That was the part. <laughs> honestly, so, so Chris, hold on, hold on real quick. Chris told me all of this, and I was like, yeah, I could probably live with that. I mean, like, I could figure out the eye stuff. I get it. He'll bite. And then he's like, also, your fruit bill is going to be 1200 bucks a week, <laughs> and it's going to shit everywhere. Like, he's like everywhere. The, the projectile diarrhea that comes out of a toucan. Fruit like, bill. I, they oh, they blast. Fruit, it on man. the walls of just blueberry puree. Yeah. Like, nice. it's just, God, on the so walls. I didn't get the two can. Dude, what, here's, yeah. here's what you do, Chris, as an entrepreneur. Uh-oh. Set up a bunch of big ass canvases, <laughs> and you could be like the there first person making two can shit paintings. Art. Two can yeah. paintings. There you go. That's Dude, actually a really good idea. Be better than kidding. a Jackson Pollock. <laughs> I would way rather. I'd yeah. also, I would put that on. That is a conversation starter in your living room. Yeah. What is that disgusting blue smudge art? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It's two can yeah. shit. Let me tell you a story. God. Guaranteed some. Just assholes in New York City would buy it for like fifteen oh, grand each. Yeah, yeah. Chris, yeah. you 100%. you should start this. This is my new marketing campaign. You should start this. This is a good idea. Here's what I'm gonna have for the next this forty acres. Good idea, <laughs> Chris, yeah. Chris. We've heard you about sell one toucan shit painting and buy another forty. There you go, yeah. there Chris. You go. We've heard about s- your least favorite animals. Who who are your favorite animals that you uh, just in life at the at, whether or not you have them. Um, I mean, I, obviously, I love the crocodilians. I love the sharks. I mean, that's a yeah. big one. I just did a, I feel like you don't do shark stuff as much, at uh, least Especially since anymore. I moved. Well, okay, so, yeah, two Tell things. Tell me about that. Right, so I moved, so I haven't done it much. I just did a night uh, dive with bull sharks last week, so it was Dude, a lot of fun. Dude, was very aggressive. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Where was that? Uh, Jupiter. Oh, same, yeah. same place we did. Yeah, Jupiter the ledge, ledge. yeah. Yeah. Um, bull sharks oh, are did aggressive. I, did I tell you I hit a, a five-minute breath hold? Good for you, man. Yeah. That's amazing. I'm pretty excited about yeah, that. Yeah, no kidding. New record Congrats, yeah. dude. That's the I'm going insane. hard the other way. Like, <laughs> I'm just getting fatter and more useless. Like, good for you. Have you ever hit a five-minute? A static. Like, okay. years ago. Like, like when I was, like, 24. Yeah, he was, like, yeah. Mr. Spear Fisherman. Man. Yeah, yeah, for he sure. Says he I was, mean, look yeah. at the stature of these two gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> I, dude, no, I've seen, I've seen, I've watched what these guys do, spear fishing. Yeah. It's, you're just like that's a different species than me. <laughs> like They're mermen laying yeah, on it's, the it's bottom. It's all in your mind. Dude. Yeah. It's minutes. all in your head. It's They're mermen. Head. Come on, guys. Mind. You guys know you're mermen. You, but yeah, so you're saying so you did recently do a shark dive, but you and Mikey um, D, rest his soul, were yeah. like my guys. Like I'd call you, I'd call Mike, I'd be like, hey, I'm coming to Florida. Where are the sharks hot? What's going yeah. on? Obviously, Mike, Mike has passed on. We all yeah. love Mike, and um, you, I feel like you're not doing the shark stuff as much, at least not so, publicly. Right, not publicly. Yeah. So, um, so the, I don't know why. I don't know if my audience is so like gator oriented, but my shark content, which is bomb, and so I, I just kind of stopped posting it. You we know? just still post that shit. We don't care. Yeah, well, yeah. the yeah. bombs one, were like, let's post but more. We're, of it. we're not very good at no. any of this. Yeah, we just exactly. post what we like. Just yeah. well, it, it just sucks because you kind of get captured by the business aspect of what you've created. Uh, you know what I mean? And it just yeah. like it's like, man, like I want to show what I want to show and not be so captured by like the interest of the audience and like I want to do what I want to do. You know? Yep. Um, so I, I still. Am. Like from the uh, night dive we just did, I'm gonna post a video of it. I don't care. It's probably gonna bomb, but I'm gonna do it anyways. Dude, diving with yeah. bull sharks? How does that bomb? So the one time That's I've crazy. seen, I've told this on the podcast, but the one time I've seen Forrest where he was scared to do something that he loves. This time this up. I, I wish I'd never do. done this. <laughs> no, normally he's doing dangerous stuff, and I'm like, please don't do that. I'm gonna get sued. Your family. But I asked him Your at one family. point <laughs> to go in Jupiter and and do this night dive after we oh. had been working with bull sharks explain all day. the set we, we'd been feeding the bulls with mikey d yeah. all day right on the ledge we'd be creating yeah. them up like there was t- dozens and dozens of bulls around yeah so Sunset. i mean night di- my understanding is that night diving with bull sharks is a bit dangerous well especially free diving and i had no <laughs> light well it sounds like chris oh, okay. is doing it for fun oh fu- i hate you so much <laughs> okay let me just explain something here let me let me paint a picture for you this will be the last thing unfortunately we're running out of time tell me if you do this on the jupiter ledge baiting them up all day getting them all revved up you know seeing the bull sharks swimming around the crates and stuff and then the sun goes down we're still out there same part boat still parked on the ledge same area and then i have to then we need a buoy to go like basically 200 feet from the boat right after sunset but nobody has a dive light mm. and you can't move the boat so i patrick's like well how do we set the buoy out and i was like fuck <laughs> so 
I just swam it over there. But this was right after sunset, after the right after you're feeding them day. off. And so would you do that? It's. I mean, yeah, it's not a good idea. But right. like, yeah, I, I would do it. Yeah, but I like, like it. You wouldn't like it though. Yeah, no. I mean, just doing these night dives. So like the one I just did last week, like within the area where the light is, is like because we got people up in the top and we got light. You know, like it's not yeah. that bad. Um, but then like to get good shots, I would go on the dark side of the boat away from the lights, and I would free dive down and then hold my breath and do a drift into it yeah you know so i'm completely Why? in the dark like i got my lights you look behind you and it's just ink black yeah. ink you know Oof. and you can't see Spooky. anything and Spooky. you do that drift in and you're just like you just really sure, hope dude. there's nothing coming up behind you because oh, yeah. yeah. you you're nuts. also trying to hold your position you don't want to spook the sharks yeah. so like yeah. that's what i mean when i'm drifting in I, I mean he knows but like for you guys i'm not moving i'm holding right. my position and i'm just drifting in just yeah. getting the video and so you can't turn around and look behind you yeah you know like, yeah, so that's where it gets creepy. like. Oh, I have so creepy. many more questions. Like, like I did, unfortunately, I know. that's the thing about Chris all day, yeah. all it, day. It, it turns up. Like, I did a night dive in uh, Mexico yeah, off Socorro yeah. offshore, and yeah. we yeah. had the silkies, and they got turned. They're up. crazy. They're the, crazy. I filmed bro. out there for a Shark Week. They're nuts. Yeah, they're nuts. They got they got like legitimately predatory on yeah. us. Yeah, like, really. Scary. Yeah. And their backs all get arched and their pecs get locked, and you're like, oh, my, my please friend, don't kill me. Well, <laughs> <laughs> my, my friend went to push when it came in. She went to push it, and that thing turned so fast right on the arm. And yeah. just, I mean, yeah. mm, I watched it happen. It was like, oh yeah. my God. They're this scary. Ain't Tiger Yikes. Beach. <laughs> they are, yeah, no. No. Kidding. no. Yeah. Dude, Socorro in the darkness with silkies is as yeah. dangerous as anything gets. It I'm was telling you. sketch. And then I had my onboard camera lights on the strobes. And then when I would take a photo, it would turn them off. So it would be like, you can see there's lights, take the photo, bright flash, and then darkness for like maybe 1.5 seconds. And then it's just so like, funny. bam, straight into the camera. And by the way, I just want to point <laughs> that's out, that's crazy. with no bait. Because there's no yeah. bait in Sakaro. That's yeah. just their behavior there. Yeah. There's nothing doing that to them. They're just like, It's pelagic darkness. mentality. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's that crazy. pelagic mentality. Dude, Chris, you're always such a joy to chat Appreciate with it, man. Thank Chris. you so much for coming yeah. on the show. Show. Thank you, guys. Thank you, bro. Uh, can't wait to come see your new place. Yeah, you got to come visit. Come check it out. Thanks, Hell yeah. Buddy. Thank Thanks you, guys. for jumping on. Hey, Chris, what's it going to be called? We're still, we're still spitballing names. Okay. Yeah, we're still spitballing names, but... um. I don't know. We got a couple ideas. I don't want to say it yet because we're okay. still trying to figure right, it out. Right. But yeah, yeah, we'll yeah, let yeah. you guys cool. know when he lets all us right. know. <laughs> <laughs> thank, you, oh, thank you, guys. Thank Thanks, you, Chris. Man. All right. Let's next bring up guest. our next guest. He's in yeah. the audience. He's friend of the podcast. Big friend of the podcast. Patiently Maxie. waiting. Here yeah. he is. I, I, ran into, I ran into our next guest, Mr. Corbin, in the elevator. Is that why you were late? I wasn't late. Oh, sorry. What are you talking about? That's Pat. All right. You know that. Yeah. What? Big audience <laughs> here for... No, Let's but I, I ran Come on, Corbin. Come on, get come on. Here. Welcome, get welcome. What's up, buddy? Wow, this guy's drinking follow. a vodka soda. Yes, uh, yeah, uh, way to follow you. after up, <laughs> Chris <laughs> the alligator. I know, it's really, it's a hard act man, to follow. The guy it? who swims with the alligators. Well, you did, you clean <laughs> hey. their poop, so that's I do. Close. And yeah. their pool, actually, which is nice. Nice to, <laughs> nice to meet you, man. You too, man. Thanks for having me on the show. Good to see you. Anytime. Corbin, what's up, buddy? Nothing much. Enjoying Animal Con. It's pretty cool, huh? It's so much fun. And you talked me into going, so I really appreciate it. There you, you go. Were like, you, you said on really these. So I ran into Corbin in the elevator. Was it last night or this morning? This morning. This morning. And he's like, you're the reason I came here because on the pod you said to come. I was yeah. like, oh, so cool. nice. <laughs> and you just Hell gotten yeah. out of the gym and you gave me this big sweaty hug. And yeah, I was I like, stunk. thanks, man. I stunk. Uh, yeah, thanks no, for was... our gym date this morning, by the way, Pat. I want to have I a gym crushed. date. Oh, did you? Did yeah. you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. shut, shut up, both of you. Anyways, go ahead, Corbin. <laughs> yes, no, I, I ran around the property. It was great. Nice, nice and dude. nice in the humidity. Nice. So, yep. nice yep. and humid, dude. You yeah. must have been drenched in sweat. Yeah, I was drenched in sweat. Out here like, in Orlando. 100%. How many snails? Yeah, she's right on. there. Oh. Hi. Hi. This lady in the orange is like, we what are you talking about? We always have like a female fan and then it's somebody's wife. A hundred percent. And I kept on winking at her during during our panel. And I think this lady in front thought I kept on winking at her. <laughs> yeah, that was okay. creepy. Make why did you move, do that? I, why not? Move. Pat, Yolo. you're the king of winks. Um, yeah. Corbin. Yes, yes. Child, child star. No, I actually don't drink. I have a Diet Coke, Nobody so cheers. But you Nobody. can have a fat tire. You I'm going to have a fifth or six. Cheers. Okay, yeah. Cheers, guys. Cheers. 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 Oh, guys. shit. Cheers. Look at We're doing a cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Yay. Clank. Cheers, audience. Thank you. Um, hey, all right. Guys. Sorry. You were asking a question. Mm. I just, you know, it's just impressive that he's so down to earth because he was a child star. A child um, <laughs> Best friends with Jay Leno. Yeah. Wait, what? Uh, this isn't on his cheek. Is, is, there, is like there a, a reason? fallen star? Is there, is, <laughs> have is you there guys seen me on The Tonight Show 20 years ago? Anybody? He was in. He, he was, was Ralphie eight? in A Christmas Story, wasn't he? Right. Yeah, he yeah. was Ralphie. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. yeah That's what, what I thought. When is your drug addiction problem going to kick in? Uh, <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> yeah, you I'm, need to get uh, some. Clean? No, that's so funny. <laughs> People said I looked like, when I was a kid on The Tonight Show, I looked like that chubby kid from Jurassic Park. You know that first one? Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm talking about? I don't remember the I kid. I love that kid. You don't remember the kid? I don't remember the kid. He's like, dino- he, remember he offends Alan Grant. He's I'll like have to the, spo- watch again. the spoiled one. Yes, like yeah. the big spoiled guy. All right. He's like, he's like, what's so scary about the Velociraptors? Oh. And then anyway, I was idiot, like, so, idiot. Uh, I, yes. was, I thought he was talking uh, about. But you asked me but how Jay Leno was great. Jay's doing yeah. great. Him Jay's and I doing keep great. in contact like this. Good. So. I'm really yeah. glad you guys yeah. are close still. <laughs> That's good, um, dude. So Wait. what's going on? I follow well, well, you on, on Instagram. Hold on, hold on. Let's what? not pass this. I, what, what is? You, were you a child star? He, was, he <laughs> talked about it on the podcast for 20 minutes. What are you and talking about? Have you seen Jurassic Park? Was Mark? I there? So I actually, no, you weren't there. I actually got my star there. on the Tonight Show with Jay Leno at 14. My mom came across a talent scout audition, and the Tonight Show was looking for weird teenagers. And I just had a bunch of reptiles <laughs> in their bonus room. I had no idea she submitted me. And then I got a call a week later yeah. from the Tonight Show, and I was like, wait, what? What's going on? <laughs> Jay and would I'm, like to talk. Talk to you personally. Yeah. Well, that didn't really happen. But after several <laughs> audition tapes, they decided I wasn't right for the weird teenager. But they said, "Would you like to go on after a celebrity?" And I was like, "Sure." So I was a freshman in high school. I um, the celebrity guest in front of me was Pamela Anderson. Like my wow. first. I uh, know. By the way, I know what you're gonna ask because apparently you weren't there the first time. You were not there. And definitely asked it the first time. Yeah. No, it's not true. Wasn't there. Don't he know what you're talking about. Didn't get a hug about. from her. He did not. No. I don't think I did. No. We from all Pam? wondered if he got a lovely bosomy hug, but he no. did not. No. But she was very, very lovely. She was so nice. All right. Good. So. Uh, yeah. How did this? Uh, yeah, I was just I w- I didn't expect it to be a whole thing. I, I know. didn't know I wasn't there. I don't know what you're he, talking he was about. There. He was there. Yeah. Um, I wasn't. All right, Corbin. Yes, so yes. you've been doing you've been doing some renovations at your spot. Yeah, Have I been doing renovation? Dude, every day is a renovation, man. Tell us. <laughs> um, every day is different. We're caring for thirty plus exotic animal rescues. Ohio, right? Al- uh, Idaho. Idaho. Oh, hi. I don't this know. This is so offensive. I'm to I California. Know. There's only two states. There's California and New no, York. No, no. Idaho and oh, Ohio. Oh, it's so are, demeaning to Ohio, Ohio right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a yeah, common like, mix-up. You know I mean? yeah, yeah. Iowa, actually. No, I'm kidding. Oh, and Iowa. Isn't that a town in Ohio? So messed up. So you have an animal sanctuary, though. I do, and we care for two rescued alligators, pythons, tortoises, and iguana. We just wrapped up a busy tour, so uh, yeah, which is pretty cool. Now we're here at Amicus. What do you do on the tour? Uh, We do live appearances, so people will come, and they're free community events, and they come and meet some of the animals, so... It's been a good would, time. Would you ever collaborate with uh, Snippy the Monkey? It's not Snippy. I keep getting the name wrong. <laughs> Jinxie? Anybody, huh? Jinxie? Jinxie. Jinxie. That's I don't not know. It I, I don't Jinxie. know. There's a monkey over there. <laughs> it's like, I, I don't know. There's a monkey with I, I an Instagram over there. Uh, no, yeah. I, oh, there's an Instagram there's monkey There's an Instagram star. monkey right there. Oh, there's yeah. Yeah. Well, well, hold on. So so you went from being a child celebrity oh on God. Jay Leno, <laughs> Jay Leno's show, to yeah. uh, starting an animal sanctuary. How did that happen? So I already had the animal rescue. And then I got my taste of media because they were looking through that talent scout audition. And then I thought it was a one and done when I was on The Tonight Show. I literally was like, I'll do this once. And then Jay invited me back. And I never felt more comfortable in my life. Like like in that seat, I was looking out the audience and I was like, this is, I felt like I had found my home. It's super weird. That's how I feel right now. You do. You look home. You know, you look so sweaty. Comfortable. I'm not (laughs) sweaty. Stop (laughs) calling me sweaty. Sweaty in the Orlando heat. You look good. Yeah, thank you. You Um, too. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Pretty smart enough to wear black. And uh, what was I going to say? Oh, I had found my passion. So from there, I continued to appear on The Tonight Show. I went to school, got a degree in biology from Boise State. Nice. Just continued to work with the animals. Boise State's in Utah. What's wrong? They're not doing good, are they? Uh, Boise State? Yeah, Boise oh, State. Oh, football? They used to, yeah, it's oh, not good. I don't know. Yeah. It's that weird blue field. I love <laughs> the blue field. I'm <laughs> yeah. super proud of the Broncos. So, uh, Broncos. so, yeah, tell us about the builds and what's what's changing. At your, your dad helps you build everything, right? Sometimes, yes. Yeah. I thought you were asking about the uh, bills. I was going to say, they're high. Oh, uh, no. Yeah. Yeah, you can the bills about those are high. if you like, but the Dude, builds, the enclosure. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot. Yeah, so a lot of it. I think that's why people How many might more be clogged ponds do you have? Clogged Dude, ponds. there was a clogged pond That'd be a good YouTube on my channel, way to man. Animal Con. I couldn't get it figured out, and I'm so embarrassed because the pond guy came up to me. He's on next on the podcast, and he wants to come out to the house. Oh, no, he Greg, is. Yeah. Greg, yeah. Yeah, Greg, and he's yeah. going to come out to the house in a couple weeks, and I'm, like, mortified. And build you a pond? I'm mortified to have this professional pond man come Come look at my stuff, but my stuff is a labor of love, and it's not like bad. It's just not like. Dude, that. I guarantee you, he's seen worse. I guarantee. I, I guess I showed him a photo, and he's like, "Oh, so you don't specialize in ponds?" Wow. Oh wow. Wow. So like he may not have seen worse. Dig, by the way. The so he looks at the photo, he's like, the mm, "You don't specialize." He's in like, ponds. "Is that yeah, a pond like, or well, a fucking I mean, hole?" I don't think they're bad. <laughs> I don't know. So is that a mud puddle? 
we have a bunch of stuff going on. So, dude, okay. what's Corbin? What is the? How big is your your biggest gator? I forget. Uh, ten and a half feet. We just measured him right before I left. Ten and a half feet. Big boy. Over four hundred pounds. What He's is a the big boy? What is the cost? Of maintaining a ten and a half foot rescue gator, thousands and thousands <laughs> per you guys, month. Uh, uh, per month during the winter time. So we I'm rabbit so mostly. I'm I'm in uh, not uh, not Ohio but Idaho. Right, uh, right. It, it gets no, cold. Iowa, Ohio. Idaho. Oh, I'm sorry, Iowa. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it, just, yeah. it gets cold just like the Midwestern state. So uh, the electric bill is the most expensive part. Um, ah. We actually feed him. A frozen thawed beef that we got from the Thomas Cattle Company. They donated four thousand pounds. Wow. Amazing. That's amazing. Have, four thousand freezer pounds. space. For Giant 4, freezers. Pounds? Yeah, and then we donated the rest to local uh, animal shelters and the Birds of Prey Center and the Black Bear Rehab. Nice. So, have you got any uh, plans for uh, any animals in? What? Why no, is there head shaking? Uh, uh, what's wrong? Yeah, what's going well, on? They, they just treat me like shit on the podcast. That's, that's, <laughs> true. that's, that's true. That's what we do. I, <laughs> oh, no. I was just going to say, thanks for derailing. But uh, <laughs> any plans for any new animals coming in with the new build and... Yeah, I think we just want to improve on the habitats we have. Gotcha. We actually just did a full alligator pool drain, found out my big male alligator destroyed his pump box, mm. so we need a new filtration system, new waterfall, so it's going to be fun doing that. How nice. did you end Waterfalls. up with alligators? Uh, so they were both rescued. I know, but how did you end up with them? So when you rescue reptiles, it's such a close-knit community, and there's not many people that do. So when you get, I mean, everyone and their mom will call you about anything they need to find yeah. a home for, a corn snake, a yeah. leopard gecko, <laughs> yeah. this and that. Yeah, yeah. And the alligators came through the rescue network. Oh, interesting. And Sonny was, my big male, was living in a teenager's bedroom. In Boise, in like, Idaho. In like a 20-gallon aquarium well, or something. He was in, no, he outgrew his little pond, so he had no water. And I found him in the bedroom. He was actually in the closet, technically. And so I found Sonny. In decent shape? He was in, his skin wasn't that. It, it, his skin didn't look good. Mm. He had a dry skin condition. So rescued well, he him. He had no water. He had no water. <laughs> Um, and he was under four feet. And then my female chompers was illegally given as an anniversary present <laughs> in Twin Falls, Idaho. And she was like this big when I got her. She showed up to me in a shoebox. And now she's seven and a half feet. By the way. Damn. By the way. That's she's amazing. She's, most yeah. people give an alligator as an anniversary gift. They get a divorce. <laughs> they yeah. actually broke up. Yeah, it's bad they luck. They broke up, yeah. man. Yeah. Were yeah, they, they married or just? Uh, I don't even know the full. I, I know they separated, whatever they were. And I ended up with chompers because it's illegal to have alligators in Ohio. Right. So, yeah, of and and also Idaho, and and also believe it or Idaho. not. Thank you. And yeah. Iowa. Here, here's, and, and Iowa. I'm now confused. I actually don't know where you're Here's, here's a pro <laughs> I tip. I forgot as well. If you're married, Kay. feel free to have anniversaries, celebrate them. Do. If you're just dating, there's no anniversary. What are doesn't you celebrating? Exist. One month? Exist. Are and, you and kidding me? Give your girlfriend a month anniversary a gator. A month? What do you want? A like a month diamond ring? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> or or I, I'm not going to name them because there's a one in a thousand chance that my friend's wife will hear this. Don't be this person who gets married and then celebrates two anniversaries. What? The marriage anniversary and the when they started dating anniversary. Get Ridiculous. Out of it's town. shenanigans. Get out of it's town. It's utter shenanigans. Nah, this is yep. trash. Nah, Corbin, are you married? Yes. We, Five oh, years? You're kidding, yeah, you're right? not even paying well, attention. Well, I didn't know if it was girlfriend or wife. She's I don't know. Audience. She's sitting out there smiling. How much have Happy you had to, to drink? be here. How All right, much have anyways. you had to drink? I'm yeah. curious. Yeah. It's, it's, been, it's, it's been a beer or two. <laughs> two, two, two and a half beers. Not yeah, a big deal. All day. Oh, good Lord. Yeah. Um, so what's next for you, Corbin? I mean, you're doing the shows. You're here yep. at Animal Con, which is super exciting. So like, exciting. The the you, Your YouTube channel is going bananas. Oh, dude. I wanted to just say your TikTok has over three million. Yes, YouTube talk. has over four million. I know, but YouTube. but like TikTok just started. How the hell did that happen? Uh, you know, TikTok. It was honestly back during the pandemic. I was doing those short form videos. I posted and posted and posted, and finally a couple videos went viral, and I was like, okay, this is what people like. And I, it's like <laughs> right on it's dancing. More of the. I used to try to be this like polished TV host. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm Forrest does. Yeah, yeah, like polished, really, polished, like really Nat scripted Geo and TV fake feeling. That's, yeah, yeah. Yes. fake yeah, bearded. This is, fun. Yeah. This this is, is what nice the beard. networks used to tell me to be just like this <laughs> guy. Veneers. Grow a beard. This is fun like for this. me. I'm yeah. having a good sharks. time now. You yeah. Didn't say this. You weren't here real quick. I'm gonna interrupt you. He's like. You are Discovery Channel. He's like the beard, the hair. Yes. <laughs> yeah. This is exactly beard and hair. what they told me to be. They said, be like this guy. And I was like, well, I'm like this. And they're like, but be like this guy. Anyway, yeah. so I went my own direction. <laughs> and uh, I went my direction, but I, I found my tribe. And I literally show people like a behind the scenes of what it's like 
caring for the animals. Because I used to try to be polished and like, this right here is an American. Out. That's just people don't so want So much that. work, yeah. too. It is. Forrest, yeah. how is that? Is that I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I love this guy. I love this guy. I love this guy. Yeah, yeah, you man, be I quiet. Oh, um, um, no, I don't do any. I don't even know I'm kidding, do dude. That. Get out of here. I'm yeah. kidding. I'm kidding. No, you, you're a teleprompter. Forrest Because we always had a teleprompter in the field. Of course. Really? Oh, I was like, no way. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, hold on. Like running Look at this with a rhino charge. Tortoise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you look over. Is that tortoise or turtle? Yeah. He's uncontrollable. <laughs> you spelled it wrong. Uh, cut. He's cut. It's a tortoise, not a turtle. Oh, cut. I need a lemon water. So okay, you said ahead. something when we when we did the uh, the panel earlier yes. today. I love that. You said your your most watched video was you cleaning a pump. Yes. Explain yes. That. It's just well, I just it's one of those <laughs> things you didn't think would go viral or what people would care. I've been cleaning animal pools and alligator pools my whole life. I've been doing this. Yeah. Who wants to see that? Well, apparently a lot of people did. And I chopped it up and a lot of our stuff is just behind the scenes stuff. And when you work with animals, things always go wrong. Uh -huh. I mean, it's not like it's I, things go wrong. If you go to my feed, there's always something leaking. Like yeah. there's always like you like you lose an eye from a toucan. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh no! Oh, I looked at his eye. Is that a glass? No. Eye? no. <laughs> yeah. I need a patch. It's a real glass. Eye. Like, yeah. no, wow! No, 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 you no, can't no. even tell, Chris, Peter. Chris, it's a Chris throwback to something you weren't here yes. for. So. Was talking about uh, toucans trying to take. Yeah, real good hosting. It's a throwback to something you weren't here for. So let's carry on. How much longer is this day? Hey, Corbin. Yeah. How much? I feel like they're giving me the time. Yes. That's the thing. So when we the first time we ever had Brian Barcheck on the podcast, yep. that's one of the things I asked him was like, I'm sure this seems like a dream job to work at a reptarium. Yeah. What's like the first year? And he was like, you're cleaning poop. You're yeah, cleaning right. poop all the time. Yeah. I'm guessing that's you spend a lot a of time question? cleaning poop. Is that all, a question? All the time. <laughs> yes. Are you yeah. saying I'm in my first year? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not no, as but successful like, as Brian Barcheck. Yeah. Absolutely not. Yeah. No, I'm still cleaning poop. I yeah. love cl anyone else clean animal poop up in here. Yes. Yes, Everyone. I like it. Everyone that's I'll, here. I, I like Just it. My I'll dog. put my, my AirPods in. I'll clean. Like That's like my alone time. So I'm still cleaning up after the animals. I'm yeah. still. It's like how you meditate. It, it is meditating, you know, when I you just that. reach in there. But that's how a lot of my content is done. When I'm just cleaning or working with the animals, that's how I'll get ideas. Something will come out, and I'll just whip out my phone. and. Yeah. Dude, that's so. Oh, man, I'm jealous. It's Thanks, just so man. easy. And you found that formula where you just you're doing what you're doing and, and loving it. Yeah, and loving then it. and then yeah. just putting it out there. People I love say it. It's been a, it's been a very long ride yeah. since sure. my childhood days yeah. on the Tonight Show. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah. You know, because I just want to be a normal person. You know? Yeah. And I'm kidding. Well, uh, once the internet, <laughs> once YouTube and TikTok came around. No, but around. YouTube and TikTok, it's been it's been a journey, but it, yeah. it's been a great one. So, yep. It's good, dude. Did well, you ever did you ever see it getting to where it is, uh, like? When you yeah, just a full -scale business really liked animals backyard, to basically. like, yeah. wow, this is my living. I it's it's sometimes it seems surreal when yeah. you look at the numbers because yeah. for so long they were so low. Yeah, for so long. <laughs> like we for you years. Mean, you mean we YouTube feel you. How many everywhere. how many years before it? Years, years. I had uh, I said this during the panel five uh, five hundred subs in twenty twenty. Holy so, shit! Yeah, so this isn't like now a four million. Wow! Four million. I haven't been. Wow! Yeah, this is this is new for me. I'm like enjoying the ride, and I'm so excited for the future. And by no means am I like, oh, I've made it. Like I, I don't think that at all. There's still so many things I'd love to accomplish and do. Good, you're so, you're humble. Yeah. You're yeah. Don't still. Worry. Don't sweat it. You're good. Oh, we, thank we, you. We hey, stop calling everybody oh, sweaty, okay, bro. Oh, good. Oh yeah. I just <laughs> <laughs> sweaty glass eye. Relax. You said yeah. sweat it. Pirate, joke. pirate Peter. God, he can't take a pirate joke. Peter. It's his whole Yarr. Florida persona. Yeah. Corbin, you doing any uh, like presentations or anything tomorrow when the when the I'm audience doing some comes? Some panels. In? We're yeah. gonna talk about our extraordinary crocodilian life, which I'm really excited about in Animal Con because oh, I fun. feel like I might be one of the. I don't quote me on this, but one of the only creators who has alligators in Ohio. Um, or uh, Iowa. Yeah, you're so the only person in any of those from Ohio. Yeah. I think <laughs> that lives there. Actually. Yeah, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was good. So I, I think because I keep crocodilians in cooler climates, it might be interesting. Cause oh, we, cool. We face Definitely. a few more obstacles than some others, but For I'm sure. excited to do that. What, and then a few on Sunday. Where you live in Idaho? Old jokes aside. Uh, so my address is one, two, three. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I, this is the, this is a question. Yes. Where you live? How cold is it in the dead of winter? Uh, dead of winter gets anywhere from negative zero to like average of twenty degrees. What's maybe? negative zero? I mean not negative <laughs> zero. Know, uh, below zero. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, it, it's it's the diet coke. My bad. Uh, the, yeah. It's the diet coke. <laughs> it's hitting them hard. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's really that's, hard, folks. that's hard to keep reptiles. In it that is kind of condition. It's it really hard. is. I mean, it's you got to you got to be really on top. Do you have solar? 
No, we do not. I need no. to look into it. Yeah. Um, but we have a big industrial heater inside of our alligator house. And then we just, but there's always something like if the electric goes out. I mean, that's something we have to deal it's with. Big, so. big I mean, problem. if your power goes out big for, <laughs> for three hours, like you could lose all your animals. Some of the tropical ones, the alligators are more hardy, which sure, is great. Sure. But we had the alligator heater go out a couple of years ago, and it only dropped to like in the 60s. Alligators are fine, but they're still my baby, so it's like 60 degrees. I'm like, oh my god! Like, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. filming. I'm like, we need to get the electrician out here, and it's it's a bunch. <laughs> That's funny. Oh That's yeah, funny. we have the electrician like fixing it. You know, the alligators are looking at him. And he's like, God, I, he's like, this is very different from my job <laughs> at the potato farm. <laughs> I'm so wrong. excited yeah. too because it hit like 15 million views, and people recognize him. So he's uh, like. Uh, he, he, he's at that That's point awesome. where now he's like, oh, yeah, I'm that electrician. I'm the alligator electrician. <laughs> yeah, I'm, the, I'm the alligator, alligator electrician. Right, well, dude, yep. thank dude, you, Corbin. Corbin. Thanks thank you, brother. On, thanks, you guys are awesome. Yes. Yeah. Friend Look of the pod. The we'll thank have you. you on again, yeah? Thank you, please. Thanks for coming nice on. Nice to meet you. Bam. We'll see Bam. you on Air some uh, panels and stuff tomorrow. Yes. Cool, All man. Right, buddy. Okay, bye, guys. Hey, don't hit that guy Coke too hard. Oh, I won't. Yeah, smart. Sure. It could be yours. Take it. Leave it there. Whoever wants it. We're going to change audio just real quick. All right. No. All right. Yeah. feed okay there's plugging in the monitor so that the people can hear us talking you mean a speaker yes the speaker idiot he's loose nobody he's loose all nobody right knows what's going on well do we have to wait or should, can we bring greg up should well we you can continue Kyle? talking if that's what you're asking i hate you so kyle's much. not paying greg! any attention yeah greg come on up how are you buddy nice yeah nice to meet you man hey. how you doing you. you can come up here Patrick. if you like how are yeah you? come on, come on up, right on guy. up all right, Greg Whitstock, everybody, the pun guy. All right. What's up, buddy? All right. Blogs is fun. Oh, yeah, hey, nice to meet you. Yeah, Much thanks fun. for having me on. Dude, of course. Tell us. Tell us about puns. <laughs> <laughs> How long do we have? 20 minutes? 20 yeah, minutes. Exactly. <laughs> Fill it up. No, but tell us. I... I, I I want I have a bond. It's nice. nothing like what you got what you do. That's how course. we all start somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Um, I like it very much. It's a tropical turtle pond. It's heated. Nice. Yeah, it's fun. In, it's indoors? Nice no, outdoor. I live in Southern California. Yeah. Well, yeah. yes. That's, so it's yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. But. Tell us about the ponds you build. They're elaborate. They're intricate. They're stunning. You do celebrity ponds. Like, you do a whole lot of stuff. So how old are you? Uh, 35. Okay. Don't lie. I didn't <clears> think <throat> about it. Yeah. 36. 32 years ago, I started my business. Okay. While a college student. So you were three years old. You were just, a wee, just out of diapers unless yeah. you were slow. No, still, he's still in diapers. <laughs> not potty yeah, trained. Still, but, still learning. Yeah. Uh, I'll but, get there. So when I was 12 years old, uh, my parents said we were moving from the uh, New Jersey Pine Barrens, Southern Jersey, which is actually a beautiful area. Home of the okay. Jersey Devil. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I was afraid of the Jersey Devil when I was out at night herping. I bet. And uh, <laughs> uh, they promised me, my mom and dad promised me I could bring 11 of my pet turtles with me to Wheaton, Just Illinois. Only 11? Wheaton, Wheaton, Illinois. Wheaton. Illinois. Yes, that's, that's literally where I got arrested when I was 14. He's okay. So excited, yes. That. Yes, it is the Bible second. Belt. Do you want to give us a quick tidbit on that or, or not? <laughs> you just want to leave it at that well i had like a bag of pot when it was still illegal what's oh. the big deal <laughs> All right, great anyway, so you're out continue. <laughs> so i built that first pond uh so i brought 11 of my pet turtles with me uh -huh. as a 12 year old kid went to the library this is a place they have things called books the wheaton yep. library I, I actually did go to the nah, wheaton library get out of here and all of the books told you to build the pond and make it strong out of concrete. And in Zone 5 Chicagoland winters, that <laughs> concrete <laughs> cracked. Crack. Yeah. Uh, my pond turned green and even my prize turtles began migrating away. And that became my odyssey, was ripping it out and rebuilding it every, <laughs> every summer as a 13 and 14 and 15-year-old kid. Oh, wow. I love that. And uh, by the time I turned 20... After rebuilding it seven times, it was looking pretty nice, and the friends and neighbors would say how beautiful it was. And then one day, the UPS guy was delivering a package. He rang the doorbell, and of course, I was putzing around in my backyard pond, and I said, come around back, and he turned the corner with a package, with a bunch of packages, and he said, this is beautiful. How did you ever buy a house with a spring on it? He thought it was a natural huh. spring, <laughs> which is a compliment to a pond builder. That's, yes, sure. absolutely. Said, oh, no, dude, I built it, and he said, uh, could you build me one? And I go, well, yes, I could. How old are you <laughs> at this that, point? I was 20. Okay. Yeah. So built my pond as, first pond as a hobby since I was 20 or 12. Built my uh, ripped it out, rebuilt it until I was 20. Yeah. And then I told my mom and dad I wanted to build ponds uh, that next summer instead of working as a lifeguard. And uh, I said all I need is a strong back, a wheelbarrow, and a shovel. And I already had the strong back from playing football. And that Christmas, I got a wheelbarrow and a shovel beneath the Christmas tree. <laughs> nice. And Aquascape was born in 1991 to build backyard habitats for fish and plants and turtles. Nice. And uh, for the first two summers, I just did that as a summertime gig. And then 
Uh, the newspaper, this is a thing they used to print with pictures in them. And Never, yes, oh, yeah. newspapers. Nice to deliver those. Ran I think he's talking to me. Ran a front page oh, yeah. story on me, said Jan Golden Pond, young in landscape Wheaton? in Wheaton. And it was the Chicago Tribune that ran the story on it. Dude. Nice. And uh, all of a sudden, baller. I had hundreds of people calling me for ponds. And all of a sudden, my summertime gig to make some money became my career. I did finish my college degree in six years. Took me six years to get my four-year degree. Only took I was building ponds six months out of the year. A couple victory laps didn't hurt anybody. And uh, yeah, I've been, got, I've been building ponds ever since. So I got a question: What what happens with the pond over the winter? Like, well, you have the to number build one it a certain question way? that you're asking, which is alluding to, is what do people do with the fish in the winter? Now you're another California guy, right? Yeah. Yes. Now. Well, he's so, from Illinois, actually. Okay. Yeah. But okay. I didn't, yeah, I didn't have a pond. Well, you know, do you know <laughs> what? Do you know what koi fish are derivatives of? Carp. 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 So they're in the rivers. They, they, they they're used fine. to the cold they like water. Okay. They like they're from Japan. That's what you know. They rice, rice patties. Yep. Yeah. So as long as you keep a hole open in the ice, they allow gas break. exchange, and when they get a little bit bigger, maybe supplemental aeration, you're good with the fish in the winter. You just leave them out yeah. there. Oh, interesting. So you've been doing this 32 years. I've been doing it 32 years as a business and 41 as a hobbyist. What is the biggest pond you've ever built for an individual? Well, there's two questions with that. How yeah. about the coolest pond we've ever built? Coolest yeah, pond. Coolest. Hell yeah. Uh, we had a TV show on Nat Geo Wild right. called Pond Stars. I did not pick the name. <laughs> no, a focus well, group did. Yeah, that's yeah. definitely a focus group. Yeah. Uh, and, and they're like, oh, Pond Stars is a thing. Let's do Pond Stars. Uh, yes. Uh, and we had a fan in Columbia, South America. And I remember him flying up, and I'm like, what, what? Why is this guy from South? We're not going to go to South this America. This is a cocaine pond. Yeah. You built a cocaine well, pond. Well, uh, palm, <laughs> palm oil. Palm oil. Ah, that's wor- that's uh, way palm worse. Point, that's way pal- worse. I wish well, the guy did cocaine. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 It's much better uh, for the environment. For, for $1.7 million, we will go to wow. Columbia, South America and build a pond. That's kind of wow. like, like, was that like a but dream of that, yours? Hold on a second. Now, Columbia, for those that don't know, is incredibly cheap. Like, you can buy an unbelievable house in Columbia for $300,000. Yep. So $1.7 million pond in Columbia, that's like, I'd say on scale, over a $10 million pond here. It is an inc- It is the most beautiful thing I have ever laid eyes on. I am <laughs> Medellin? What's great? Are you married? Medellin? No, no, it's in Villa Vicencio. No, I, I hope your wife yeah, doesn't okay. hear this. And the, ma- <laughs> the, 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 the owner of the shopping mall, his money came from Palm Oil, but he built a big shopping mall okay. in downtown. Mm. What was a fan of Pond Stars wanted us to build, so we built an entire the entire shopping mall is built around the pond. So it's a oh, that's oh, wow! Yeah, well, it's 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 not that big. I mean, it's big. I mean, it's it's a hundred and sixty by eighty. You know, for Palm Stars, big pond. Big. Crystal clear, filled with all sorts of incredible fish, including a six foot. Uh, long era Pima, so native hundreds is- of turtles, wow. native and unnative, and they have, they have koi in there. It's just a hundred thousand fish in total. Holy crap! And here's the thing: everybody in the entire shopping mall looks down on it. So every single platform looks That's in this awesome. pond, and wow. he was the only guy on the uh, in the company that wanted it. All the executives were against it, and now it's everybody's favorite thing. Yeah, of course. Gre- Gre- Why wouldn't I yeah, people go there just to this. see it? I'm I sure. love Columbia, yeah. by the way. I could live in Columbia, so now I want to go there and build a million dollars. All pond. you got to do is go um, to go to YouTube, type in Aquascape Columbia, and it will pop right up. Okay, I got to see this pond. Yeah. I mean, this sounds phenomenal. Have you one thing that I've seen that's become popular lately is saltwater ponds. The challenge with saltwater ponds, we get asked this a lot. We don't live in California for most of the things. Yeah. You, unlike a, unlike an, uh, just think about how hard it is with a, a, a freshwater, a, a saltwater tank compared to a freshwater right. tank. Oh, yeah. Protein skimmers, and, chillers. Yeah. And when you're dealing bakers, with outside, and if you get an inch of rain or whatever, and it will Fuck. change the pH, everything will go. So the yeah. only way to really successfully build a successful outdoor pond is to recirculate the water from the ocean, which means you got to be next to the ocean. Which yeah. means you have Interesting. to live on the sea, basically. Pretty much. So, yeah, so that's hard to do. So let's say somebody calls you. I'm yes. sure this has happened. And they say, hey, I have this vision for a pond, but here's the fish I want to keep in it, or here's yep. the animal I want to yep. keep. Uh, obviously, then you have to start researching about that animal, what's needed for that. Have you ever just been, like, pretty stumped where somebody had a, a vision and you're like, I don't know how to do this? That's a good question. So every time that I get stumped, I just go to somebody smarter than me, which would be Ed the Pond Professor. Yeah. And he enjoys the stumping questions. So the Columbia, <laughs> South America job, try building a job in a third world country when you live in Chicago. Yeah. Uh, he was able to pull no, it thanks. off. So he's the guy that's the professor, is Ed the Pond Professor on YouTube and everything else. Yeah. So my channel is more about lifestyle. I get to go focus on how people are living the Aquascape lifestyle. And then the Team Aquascape is our construction channel. So yeah. when I get stumped, which happens more often than not, I would just turn to somebody who's been with me for 30 years now building ponds and you're still in illinois 
I personally live in Park City, Utah area okay. mm-hmm. um, because that was a second home that became our first home when my wife said I'm not going back to Illinois. Are you Mormon? out there. Uh, but uh, Chicago land is where our co- corporate headquarters is. And you build ponds nationwide or my mostly ma- in the Midwest? My main business is manufacturing equipment and shipping it all over the world. The same products that I developed in my backyard <laughs> classroom out of garbage cans and cattle troughs, I then got a patent at 24 and started commercially manufacturing them and selling them to other contractors around the world. And these are pond products, like pond filters products. and pumps and things Ev- of that every nature. every single thing associated from with with water features from fish food oh, to wow. yeah, to how everything. Do, how would it uh, how much money would it take to just build a basic small pond like maybe what? Like 5 by Five by eight. The average, the average water feature that we get that's a good size, balancing yeah. the needs of a future hobbyist with the budget of a current one, would be about a eleven by sixteen foot pond, and depending on depending on the different conditions and, and bells and whistles, you get, you're looking at about a eighteen to thirty thousand dollar investment wow. for an eleven by sixteen foot pond. Forrest, and let's, let's play a little quick game here. Oh, I love it. Love, love games. Forest has a turtle pond. I do. Built yourself. Uh, with the help of someone, but okay. yes, mostly by myself. I know what your house looks like, your yep, property. You do. I want you to quickly describe the dream pond, right? Yep. And the then drawing. Greg is going to just tell you what the price Give is. Give me a be. quote. Yes, okay. I, no problem. Yep. All right, so oh, here we go. So the like dream pond for me, you don't know my house, so I have to try and descri- describe it. It's very hilly, California. Adds, down adds money. Of yes. course. <laughs> that's why I'm, that's why I'm yep. bringing it up. Uh, it would be probably like... One of those zoo-style enclosures where you have, like, the concrete rocks, the, the big log, yep. the, the greenery. You know, I'd like to grow all natural because it's Southern California, so yep. everything grows as long as it's fertilized right. Mm-hmm. And then about a 300 to 500-gallon water feature. Oh, that's very small. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then mm-hmm. I want a 500 to 1,000 gallon. <laughs> <laughs> 10,000 gallons. Yep. No, no. But, uh, all right, all right. Let's all right. call let, Okay, let's say 500 gallons. 500 gallons, 500 yep. gallon water feature, maybe more, maybe 800. Mm-hmm. Now you're about 11 by 16 foot pond. Okay, that's about right. right. So let's give but, it a standard. But this is terraced at this point, right? Yes. Because you're coming down a hill where you walk in front of it has a big glass wall so that you can, you know, look through into the pond. Ooh. This sounds like something that you dream when you're laying in bed at night trying to fall asleep. Correct. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> and so that you have this, like, interactive pond that you can enter into, swim in it, whatever, which I yep. know is something you Wait built. It, yep. But mm-hmm. then you also, because it's on a big hill, you have this sort of zoo-style glass wall that you can look And at. what are we keeping in the pond? Mostly, mostly a mix of tropical turtles and fish. How many? It's got to be heated. That's, uh, a, that's, let's a, that's a Toyota Camry. That's a Toyota. So thirty, 30 grand? grand. Yeah, thirty grand. That sounds that's doable. Not that bad. I think we I, should I do gotta this. T- I got to tell you, it's not. <laughs> it's not though. It's not, and I'll tell you why. Because my little pond that you guys have seen, which is not what I'm talking about. Sa- I live in Santa Barbara, California. It's Beautiful. a very expensive town. Yes. Unfortunately, that cost me sixteen thousand dollars. Yeah, but this is the pond guy. He's yeah, but I think deals the left costs, and right. I think the costs of where we live make that go up. Sure, I could absolutely. Be wrong, but it, no, the concrete it, it, costs, the labor. So costs. we don't we don't use concrete. No we concrete. Don't do fake baby. Rock. We don't do uh, fake rock. We do natural stone. That's so much better. Yes, and yeah. and we're, we you know our whole byline is to connect people to water the way nature intended it. Okay. You yeah. know and we believe in working with Mother Nature, creating ecosystems that are low maintenance. Where so many people, when they put in a water feature, it's kind of like, I would say the ninety. 8.8% of water features that I see. I mean, I was just coming into the to the airport here in Orlando, yeah. and I put an Instagram story about the crappy concrete pond that everybody that comes to Disney World gets to see. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it looks man-made. You fake see yeah. the concrete, like the fake that. rocks are chipping, it just, and it's at Disney, yeah. you know? And so it's so frustrating to me when I see, it, it, it's like basically if anyone's only ever driven a Yugo, and they yeah. think all cars are Yugos, and we're selling Camrys sure. to Ferraris, sure. yeah. you know? And it's frustrating because it, you can't just Paint it with one broad s- stroke. Right. So, kind of your p- your passion comes from creating what it's would an ecosystem like a really. natural yeah. a natural looking pond yeah. as the, opposed to like the guy the UPS guy. How did you ever buy a house with a spring on it? Boom. That's the <laughs> yeah. Goal. That's the <laughs> Wait. Line. So you're saying that Disney World awful has a crappy pond? Awful. We built for <laughs> seven. That's this is, a, that's this a is breaking news. The almost, stock price almost is going to go every, down. Every Almost every single commercial water feature that I see, unless I go to Columbia, South America, <laughs> is built improperly, built with fake rock, not natural, high maintenance, and eyesore, and, and everybody hates it. And then this is what the public gets exposed to, which right. is why my entire channel is about showcasing in people's backyards how people with a backyard in a regular neighborhood look nicer than what they have at Disney World. Uh, by the way, I'm not, I'm not joking. I'm staying this publicly on the pod. 
I will pay the cost of a Toyota Camry for you to come and build that. I swear to God. I'm Let's not do it. I'm not kidding. We I'll will document this. This I will be on God, the channel, both that. channels. I will put Ed the Pond Professor on it. You do. <laughs> right. Go for it. Uh, so real, real quick, Greg, because I've, I've got a big flat lot in my backyard. you got a good space for a pond. Oh, yeah. So here's what I want. I want a 22 by 32. Uh, so that would be a recreation pond is what we would call I'm that. I'm doubling up on forests because I want a bigger. Yeah. A, a bigger That's pond. huge. He does, he does yeah, that. it's um, like the size but of he a wants, pool. But you want to swim in yours, correct? Tell him, you um, want, this is a I new thing, by the way. Let me won't be swimming you. in mine. Let me interrupt you for one second. This yeah. is a new thing, Greg, way in here, where people are building these natural swimming yes. pools uh, where it has all, it, they're crystal clear, they're beautiful. Biologically filtered. Biologically yeah. filtered with natural plants and water like lilies. This. So your family could swim in it, but it's also a gorgeous water feature, not just like a tiled swimming pool. Now, this is going to be tough. Because you pond. want otters in there? No. In my pond, I'm just going to have one very large arapaima. Okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> I want the entire yeah. Yeah. I want the entire pond to be lined with natural rock from the Green River formation with fossils okay. on it. Okay. With the fossils, don't forget. And then I'd like a little pit dug with just some nice benches so that I can sit and look through one wall of the pond. Oh, what about the jets to finish off the jacuzzi you just built? It's not a jacuzzi. Oh, it's okay. an Arapaima pond. That's a Ferrari. All All right. Right. We can do yeah. it. That's a 200 k we're looking at. Yes. Fuck. Not if you're yeah. in Columbia. Sorry, dude. Yeah, I know. I we've talked about that. I know that was your big dream. Yeah, <laughs> I just I had it. I had to it, add the Green River. It's thing okay though. The average person has three water features. Just just like your car. You know, when you're 16, you don't go out and get a Ferrari, right? Right. You, exactly, you, get, a, you right. get a successful podcast, you get a Ferrari. There yeah. you go. Wait, All what right. do you mean the average person has three? The, the average water person. Features? You have a small a hot tub. That's two. No, no. Is yeah. that true? No, no. The it's small, bigger. Big, bigger, biggest, good, better, best. Okay. You know, just like your cars. You don't start off with, you know, driving a Mercedes yes. or a Lexus. You start off and like then a you fountain. eventually get there. Yeah. And that's the same way with water features. And we, what we like to say, if you want to save money, build the third pond first. But if you can't <laughs> afford it, you know, get yeah. there now, you know. Right, right, yeah. right. right, right. Yeah. Like that's we funny. just got b done building a recreation pond for Tanner Serpa two weeks ago, but he started off with an 11 by 16 foot pond three years ago. There you go. See, the problem is you got to have space for this stuff. We live in California. Yeah. Space is limited. Yes, that's true. The smaller the that's yard, the bigger an impact a water feature makes. That makes Absolutely. Sense. That really does make sense. Yeah. It's a this lifestyle, man. It's well, a lifestyle. Let's get into it. One day, I'll get my large tropical turtle pond. Yes. Greg, you're going to be the first person I call. And then I'll refer you right over to Ed the Pond I don't professor. care who does <laughs> pond it. I don't professor. care. No. no. Thank you so much, Greg. Thank really you, appreciate uh, your time jumping on the pod. And uh, I hope people check it out. And Aquascape. Aquascape Inc. Yeah, Aquascape on, on uh, YouTube, YouTube and Instagram. Greg Whitstock, the pond guy. The pond yeah. guy. Yeah, the pond, pond guy. guy. It's easy to remember. I was just looking at his hat. Off. And you're Jeff Bridges, right? That's correct. That's, he wish. gets that every day. I, I love wish. it. Greg, thank you so much. Thank you, Greg. Thanks so much, man. Oh, we got a picture coming. Picture coming. Oh, hell yeah. Nobody wants a picture. Come in here. Get in. That's the pond guy, Greg Whitson. Right, Thanks, buddy. Man. Appreciate Thank it. You, brother. All right. All right. All right. We got one more guest coming. Woo! We got sound it's now. Marathon. Everybody can hear us. Is mine working? Thanks, man. Thank you. Dude, thank Good you, Greg. You. That was sweet. Awesome. So All right, this, guys. This next guest. Who's up? Uh, kind of stand him. Kind of wish he wasn't coming on. He was He was with us when someone handed us a glass with four types of whiskey in it. Oh, my God. He looks night. just like that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Leone, Garden State Tortoise. What's up, man? What's up, buddy? Gentlemen. Welcome. How are we? Good. Welcome. Nice uh, to see you. Most importantly, how are you feeling? <sighs> no thanks to you guys. What was that drink called? What was that drink uh, called? What was it? Yeah, and no thanks to my wife. Yeah. I, uh, I've had better... <laughs> Situations. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> do you remember the stipulation that I made about having that shot? We were just talking about that. Yeah. What? Um, What's the stipulation? He's you, gonna top, right? You're gonna top. Tonight's it. shot is gonna be worse. Uh, I'm buying it. You're gonna buy you it. You were standing there. It's wild. I wasn't listening when you talk. Yeah. It's there hard. was a lot of chatter about the shot, this disgusting yeah. shot <laughs> that Forrest is gonna concoct. Oh no, I know exactly what it is. I knew uh, what it was going into it. Okay. Yeah. No. So what is it? I can't tell you. Okay. Nope. All right. So good. Good. Out I guarantee you we will be talking about it on tomorrow's pod. I guarantee <laughs> it. I do. All right, Chris. Yes. Chris. Yes. You're a tortoise guy. Uh, some say that. And turtles. He does turtles, too. Yeah. Yeah. I just think He's my turtle consultant. First question. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Are you not my turtle consultant? I, 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 I guess I Of recent? I I of late? Of recent. Of First yeah. question as the layman, what's the difference between a tortoise and a turtle? Oh, my God. What is oh, the difference off. between a tortoise and a turtle? Well, let's start with... One all tortoises water? are turtles, but not all turtles are tortoises. Take wow. that I've home, I've said this to that. you 
How many times would you say I've said that? I don't listen. Uh, we, when we've you speak. told Peter that he just needs to say Tortuga moving Tortuga. forward because yeah. it means both. <laughs> and he has no <laughs> idea what the difference is. Turtus. Turtus. Turtus works too. Did you consult Chris before you went to the Galapagos to Fernandina? No, I met he Chris He didn't need my help that. with that. No, yeah. I met Chris after that. <laughs> How did okay. you feel about um, that? I, I, I was um, we, we were very excited about that. We were, you know, yelling at the come TV and our come up, uh, come up, come up, come up, come up, come up, come up. They're they're like a they're like, they're, they're a are, team. They're a team. They're a, duo. they're a team. Share the chair. Share the chair. Immediately. <laughs> <laughs> we were like yelling at the TV. Hey, Casey. <laughs> Welcome, Casey. All right. We're getting Casey on, too. It's All good. Right. They're both. Casey, Casey, does, own? Casey does some super cool stuff. She has a whole foundation with Diamondback Terrapins. Like, oh, wow. Let's, just, let's squeeze them in. It'll yeah, be good. Hell yeah. Kyle's also panicking. way better I guarantee you she's like half cut off in a camera, and Kyle's fully panicking right now. It's fine. <laughs> it's good. Uh, all right. All right. So, please continue. Well, I was just uh, he said they were screaming at the TV. They're we watching. Were, we were freaking out. That was and, very uh, exciting. Yeah, we were freaking out, and I, I, I don't know, man. I, mean, I, I don't know what that feels like, you know? Good. That, that, I mean, but, but it, came, it, was, it came through the TV. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 So. Well, we were all really, I mean, like, all the, Pat was there, obviously. What? Who, me? No, Chris. Me? Oh, yeah. on, the, on the mic. Guys, we were all please. very excited. I mean, for They're us, not the best mics. It really just They're destroys not the best everything. Oh, I hate you so much. It's been <laughs> a long day. Uh, no, didn't consult you guys over for an ending. I didn't know you guys then, but have since become close and yes. chat with you guys about turtle stuff and tortoise stuff. Tell us about your guys' stuff. Tell us about the turtles and tortoises that you have. Talk about the diamondback terrapin thing. I think that's really cool. I want to come up and see that with all those hatchlings. Yeah. Um, into the mic, though. Make yes, sure. Yes, into the mic. Thank you. Uh, you can pull it towards you as much as you want. Is this on mic? So the craziness has been going on since I was five. Um, long story short, playing in my sandbox, G.I. Joe's. G.I. Joe's quickly switched over to turtles because my father found a box turtle while he was mowing the lawn. So at that moment, I just became obsessed, weird. You know. Yeah. <laughs> and, well, you, were, you were already weird. I was already weird. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You got to be weird. Start to, to think about yeah. that day now. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so <laughs> fast forward, I, I became a musician for a long time, and oh. I was touring. I was putting out records, and then um, towards the very tail end of that, uh, I was in a band, and we were doing a photo shoot, and the clubs wanted a different type of photo shoot than the stupid like lead singer stands in the front and the rest right, of the right, right. The so our man, yeah. Yeah. yeah, our manager came up with the idea. She's like, "Let's have like a bunch of girls at a party with you guys." We're like, "You find a bunch of girls to hang out with us, and we'll do it." <laughs> she found like 50 girls, you know, and this one was there. So I noticed her, and I was like, she's wow. pretty, you know. <laughs> and then, one uh, out of 50 shots. Yeah, too. Uh, that's good. Yeah. Luck. Uh, and you bagged yourself a turtle guy. <laughs> hold on. Hold, yeah, <laughs> that, that's, that's where it gets weird. So, you know, we, we started talking, we started dating, and then I think it was like one day in the car, I was like, I got to tell you something. You know, usually when somebody says that, you're like, okay, uh, what? We're breaking like, up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I, oh, great. I need yeah. to get checked. I was like, I, I got to tell you something. She's like, what? I said, I like turtles. She was, like, go like she was like, she was like, turtles are, are Casey, cool. Casey, let's hear your side of the story. How did <laughs> hey, it go? No, let him finish. I don't know what he's talking about. I All have right, the never mind. moment that I introduced Continue, you continue, them. continue. <laughs> I like and, uh, and she was like, yeah, turtles are cool. And I was like, yeah, but no, I really, really <laughs> like turtles. It was on, my way, on the way to my parents' house, I yeah. think. And uh, she was like a farm girl growing up. She loved animals, yep. you know. So she took to it. And then like in 2011, we just came up with the idea to start Garden State Tortoise, which was just going to be like a reptile breeding outlet at first okay. yeah so we did that and um we it all just snowballed from there conservation uh relationships with state and federal fish and wildlife agencies zoos social media came into play and she's the one that she's the editor she's the film you know, videographer like She's the only reason why we sometimes look good. Yeah, that's that's what I used to yeah. do on this podcast until we got Kyle. So I yeah, feel, now we have a Kyle. I feel the guy also, I'm watching Kyle just with Kyle, a yeah. weird smirk, insane outfit. He's very outfit. smirking. Yeah. Um, yeah. And he looks he's like he's been working out. Carrying he's bins. Jacked. Are those yeah. turtles? He's what what is he doing? I don't know he's what he's jacked. doing. We'll find out. Bins and um, so yeah. when, when, when I saw you guys last year, and Al's here too, by the way. Shout out to Al. Hey, but, Al. Um, yeah. you, Casey, you show me some amazing photos of some of the like vet work you've done on these turtles that got hit, uh, Diamondback Terrapin specifically, that have been hit on the roads. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. So they'll, I, I think a lot of people, unless you're in the turtle tortoise world, don't know this. Stay with me now. <laughs> they, where they live in New Jersey, there's a big mass migration every year, or not really migration, but movement between land and water of these Diamondback Terrapins. Beautiful, beautiful turtles. Mm. And uh, a lot of them get hit on the roads. 
they run around and pick them up and glue them back together. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell me I'm lying. So, so if I'm being honest, there's a lot of them that I actually just release because with diamondbacks, they occur in salt water. So the salt water is the best thing for the them. Sterilizer. Right. Yeah. And they're so uh, right. incredibly uh, resilient. Missing front legs, missing back legs, uh, cracked plastron. Um, wow. I've actually seen them nest with an open body cavity. Yeah. Like you can Pretty see gnarly. there. Well, yeah. That's yeah. gnarly. And, and I'll look at them and say, well, she's hydrated. She's strong. I release her. I'll see her three weeks later, and she's starting to fuse already. And they, she's fine. But you'll that's also crazy. glue some of them back together. Like you were showing me ones that you'd worked on, right? Um, or not anymore. No, we so we're actually not permitted to do that. Oh, never mind. That didn't <laughs> happen. Well, so you you're helping you help them but recover. I do, I do like um I do a lot of rescue calls. So like I say, okay, this one doesn't need anything. You can let it gotcha. go, mm -hmm. or I'll I'll get it to the right place. Um, a lot of our work too is pit tagging to yeah. prevent yeah. poaching, and then we also excavate all the nests that we find, and we artificially incubate them and release all the hatchlings. That's so cool. Thousands of hatchlings. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys, did you see the photos last night? I forget no. that was before or after uh -huh. you guys arrived. No, I don't remember last What's night. I don't know. I don't know <laughs> what so happened far. last Final, night. Uh, uh, like all the years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm I, sure you're talking. Yeah, yeah. I think. Oh God, we got to be at like three, four thousand hatchlings. Yeah. And I mean, she's pit tagged easily. Three thousand adults. Yeah. Uh, Dude, that's know? dedication, right this, there. This, this, a lot of turtles. Like that's what Forrest was saying with with like the mass like movement. It's like a sea turtle aribata, but with diamondback terrapins. They're everywhere. So when the conditions are spot on, all right, you know, uh, it's it's always in June, mm -hmm. and you know it, it depends on the tide, the sun, um, uh, what else? Uh, the overall conditions. Sure. And you'll get down there, and you'll just start seeing these shadows moving across the road, and we'll have seventy in forty-five minutes, right? You know, wow, it's yeah. pretty epic, cool. You know? Yeah. And, then, and these beautiful like white spotted crazy pattern turtles i mean they're beautiful animals. And, then, and then so uh do you kind of just go out there while they're doing this migration and you see which ones need help and so they close the roads for that no no they should they won't hmm. so we uh we patrol the roads we have specific locations we're permitted to work in and uh we drive around and find the ones that are in immediate danger and those are the ones that we move to safer areas um, but for the most part, it's a lot of like I think you would really enjoy it because it's a lot of zigzagging and bolting and running here. <laughs> what, what, are you, what are you? What are you saying, Casey? What are you trying to say here? Such a zigzagger. It's exciting. <laughs> yeah, you, um, would, you would get excited. No, yeah. I'm sure I'd absolutely love it. Well, that's cool. And then at home, you guys have a ton of animals, yeah. right? Uh, one of your one of my favorite things that I've seen from you ever, Chris, was uh, you went and did that. Not is it a chitra? The giant yeah. soft shell uh, yeah, with Maurice. Yeah, 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 What's a Let's chitra? So yeah, cal would you calm down? Sorry. Okay, you're getting uppity. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Pat, remember remember the raffidus, the giant soft shell. Yes. From Vietnam. Raffidus swinhoi. Correct. Yeah. Swinhoi. Yeah. Of course. And uh, I spent a that. full day shirtless w looking for one. Yeah, you're never gonna <laughs> let that go. Yep. I, I covered his shirt in cobra venom, and he got uh, mad at me and wouldn't put it back on. Nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's no reason. Rightfully to get mad. so. <laughs> but um, uh, anyway. Uh, the Chitra is the Indian subcontinent version of that, basically, right? Yeah. Wouldn't you say that's a good way to? to yeah. Put so that? this, so the one that we filmed with was the uh, um, Burmese or Myanmar narrow-headed softshell turtle, which was Chitra vandykii or Vin vandykii. There's there's incredible. four in the country. Yeah, and, and oh, wow. I mean, and they get, they get 300 pounds. Wow. They're massive. They're like big slimy pancakes. Yeah. You know, you're yeah, never gonna really eat pancakes cool. again now. Sounds you know? delicious. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, <laughs> but yeah, our, our friend Maurice, who's one of the founders of the Turtle Conservancy, he has he has a more manageable, smaller collection of just some of the most bizarre, rarest turtles you will ever come across. And I mean, these things in I New Jersey, right? Yeah, in New Jersey. And and I remember, you know, remember picking them up. Yeah. And they strike so fast that it jolt while you're holding it jolts your whole body, but you don't <laughs> even see it. Wow. You know? And then they use their like their the upper part of their plastral lobe and the, and the tip of the w carapace. What's a right plastral there, the lobe? Oh, the, the bottom shell. Gotcha. You know, or in, in a case of a I'm soft good. shell, the that, bottom that pancake. That a fair question. Yeah, the bottom, yeah. the bottom pancake. The bottom The bottom flap. Yeah. 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 They're very difficult to pull out of yeah. the water yes. because they have the uh, very wide body. Well, and it's also yeah. like soft and mm -hmm. sort of gelatinous-y in a way. It is. It's and then like their a claws, 
can hit you from anywhere, basically. Do you know what I mean? Like their feet on those big soft shells yeah. can scratch any part of their body, which are pretty sharp. Yeah. Yeah. And and I mean, if, if it doesn't, if the speed is insane. And if they don't manage to clamp down on you, they're going to bruise you. You know what yeah. I mean? The way they, 300 I mean, pounds. it's like they just throw their head out, you know. And uh, But gelatinous is really a nice way to describe that. Gelatinous <laughs> is a beautiful way to describe <laughs> Gelatinous <laughs> turtle. So tell us a little bit about, so you guys told us about the, the uh, diamondbacks, and you obviously work with these other things, but you breed animals as well. Yeah. You're in the hobby industry. Like, tell, for those that are watching this at home that have, like, man, I've always wanted to get a tortoise. Yeah. Well, um, what, would, what would you say? What don't would you do say it. To that don't <laughs> get it. They <laughs> live a really long time. <laughs> well, yeah. Yes, they do. Longer than birds. Like, at they this live. point, I was talking about this with my wife. Because she loves tortoise. Yeah. She was like, should we get a tortoise? I was like, I, we're going to have to leave it to someone in the will at this yeah. point. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's yeah. how we got our two sulcatas. Yeah. Yeah. My wedding gift to Casey was a baby Aldabra tortoise okay. that we still have. She was this big. She's over 100 pounds now and nowhere near done growing. No. Really? Yeah. So um, Not luckily, even a our quarter kids, through the life. Yeah, I mean, yeah. luckily our kids are into it. We don't know how into it they're going to be when they grow older, but whatever, you know. Um, we we have we've created such a network though, and a lot of friends where you know, we'll be the animals are going to be all right. Yeah, yeah. but course. that is something that any of you guys out there need to think about. You're thinking about getting a tortoise. You know, this isn't you know. Sometimes people the lifelong write, investment. Yeah, and sometimes yeah. people write in and they'll say, "Oh, I had a tortoise, and you know, it, it it lived a good life. It died when it was about twenty. And I'm like, "What'd you do wrong? Right? You're yeah, like, it didn't live a good life. Yeah, yeah. At, <laughs> at twenty, you know. Yeah, tortoises are some of the longest living uh, Land terrestrial animals. vertebrates. Yeah. yeah, terrestrial vertebrates. Yeah, that's what you were gonna say, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I, I just think I just want to circle back to something. So, Chris, you're taking your girlfriend at the time <laughs> to meet your parents, presumably for the first time. And you decide, this isn't enough, her meeting my family. <laughs> I've got to tell her, you don't understand. i got to tell you I something. I like turtles more than a human should like turtles. <laughs> yeah. And then, how'd it go over? <sighs> well, well, let's hear from, let's hear from let's Casey. Hear from Casey. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Why don't, yeah, why don't I you? I mean, I've loved animals my whole life. Uh, that was it, sorry. though. You were I like, made I, that, I, made this I love turtles, too. I mean... I'm a very versatile person. I <laughs> like to consider myself like a jack of all trades. I dive into things and I just dove into it. Did you yeah. say cool. versa turtle? Are cool. She's a versa turatile person. You a versa yeah. turtle person? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it, it went well. There wasn't really a pause. I just kind of was like, like, oh, right. cool, you like okay, I like turtles. And now, yeah. now you have thousands. The, the no, literally have thousands. Yes. It, yeah. it, the funny part is, like, it's such a big moment for for uh, for Chris. For Chris. And uh, the big reveal <laughs> the for disclosure. her, like, like he probably was preparing for three to four weeks. Practice like, in the mirror. I'm going to tell her at the perfect time. What? Let's play a little <laughs> game here. Turtles. Let's play a little game here. <laughs> this just made me think of something. You guys are just going to have to think of your own version of this. Okay. <laughs> Patrick, okay. you have to break it to your wife now after multiple years of marriage and <laughs> two children. Mm -hmm. I like blank. What is it you're saying and how is she responding? This has to be true and something she doesn't currently know? Correct. Jesus. Alcohol. <laughs> she knows that. She knows that. <laughs> yeah. She's quite familiar with that. You're saying this in the capacity of, like, we're, we're getting into this. I don't mean we're getting one. Oh, we're okay. getting many. Well, I got something I'm starting to think about. <laughs> yeah. Hey, so I know I'm a man in my 40s. Kind of thinking about getting back into collecting baseball cards. <laughs> <laughs> How's I'm she really taking that? About it. How's huh? she taking that? She doesn't give a shit. No, she doesn't. <laughs> she's like, do whatever you're going to do. I don't care. Yeah. yeah Peter? It's fun. Yeah. What are you telling? What are you telling Liot? I've been thinking about this for at least 25 seconds, and <laughs> I'd say. Uh, now, what's the question again, real quick? Oh, my He's God. He's already forgotten. <laughs> yeah. It's you're amazing. You're breaking it to your wife that as an adult male, you're getting into something new in your relationship. What's the quote? I, I like. I like blank. I liked it before we had children. <laughs> 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 You're missing the point. Hopefully the she's watching the live. Oh, yeah. She's watching. Oh, she first, what's you yours? Know. Guinea fowl? You're going to just get a bunch yeah, more? Yeah, I want more guinea fowl. Yeah. yeah, I don't already despise them enough. <laughs> Another peacock, please. No, I've tried mine. I've tried mine for like six years, which is crocodilians. Yeah. Yeah, my wife's just like, no. Nope. Like, oh, no, yeah, because you want to put a little gator in the pond. That's what happened to me, too, when I wanted crocodilians. You got oh, a hard nose. You got a hard no? You know. <laughs> you got a hard no? I was down. I was down with it. Nah, it's it's much harder in California. A crocodile by the way. will it's eat like a all big of deal in a crocodile will eat all of your gelatinous turtles. <laughs> it's true. Well, it, it was a caiman. Yeah, it was a caiman, Ooh. and yeah, our good so friend bad. Kevin was supposed to. He was going to help us out with it, but the state was like, "No, you don't have enough experience." A caiman, you said? Yeah. What species? A dwarf. 
Oh, that's cool. Years. That's cool. Yeah. You so know what I what I, I like about you guys is that you do everything like on the up and up. Like you're working with the city to do this effort to, you know, rescue. They're these not turtles. Tiger King in it. No, no, they're, no, not not Tiger King. King. no they're not Turtle King in it. <laughs> <laughs> turtle well, I feel like Jersey's well, probably not the most like. It's not like the easiest state to have exotic animals. I would I would guess. It, it depends. Like they they um and I think you'll agree with me on this. Some things you you'll get really surprised that they're like really? yeah sure no problem and they're usually you know we've been working with them for years since I was a kid. I always made sure that I had all my ducks in a row with like paperwork and stuff. Yeah. And um but then you know you go and ask for something you know and and we're like. 90% education now with, with how we've gone on social media and they'll just, nope, can't have that. Can I, hmm. but can, I can then? Can yeah. we do like just a little game, Pat? Uh, you're the governor of New Jersey and sure. you're you and you're trying to convince the governor that you need to do this turtle effort for the big turtle uh, what's it called? They want the Migration. roads closed. Wait, yeah. Am I, am I still asking? Coming up. Yeah, am I still asking for the Cayman? No, uh, no you're, you're trying yeah. to close the roads for the Diamondback Terrapin migration. Okay. The How are you pleading more, to the, the governor? Over? Look at his like smug look and the slick back hair. He's very He's Jersey governor. guy. Yeah, He's Jersey governor. I'm, I'm very busy. And, and he has such a good voice too. Yeah. So yeah. You got to make really do the Jersey voice too. I, yeah. I, I can't do a Jersey. <laughs> what about you? All right. What about you? I don't even know what New Jersey sounds like. It's like I don't even know where it is. It depends on where you are in the state. If you're hey, you're down south. Hey guy, come on. No, no, I'm no. DJ Paulie. You I'm heard the guy from Tanked? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's New York City, but. It's the tank yeah. guy. Yeah. Yeah. All depends. right, let's go. Plead your case to the okay. governor. <clears throat> Mr. Governor? Yes, sir. I like turtles. <laughs> How much? <laughs> a lot. You're very Wait, you're were you asking doing well money? to charm me here? What, uh, what do you need? Do you like says. turtles? They're fine. Yeah? Do you like your state? Yeah. Do you care about your people? Very much so. Okay. <laughs> Do you care about the people that like turtles? Mm. How many are there? It's boxing you into a corner. There's me, for starters. Okay. <laughs> and I would like your vote. I, I do have, have an I election I have a few coming. friends, like one and a quarter. Yeah. Yep, yep, okay. Um, well, there's a lot of turtles where I live. Okay. And they're crossing the roads because they want to go lay their eggs. Because turtles lay eggs. Did you know that? That Mr. seems Governor? important. I did know that, yeah. Some people don't. Okay. <laughs> Some people think that the stork just drops the babies off. Understood. <laughs> yeah. So they're crossing the road. Yeah. To my knowledge, I'm not an expert. They're not the fastest animal. Nope. Okay. So they're um, in the road for a while. Hmm. So what's happening is this concerns me. Our uh, our wonderful shore traffic, which I know we need. Yeah. I know. Tourism. I know the economy needs it. Mm-hmm. Yep. The beaches and yep. restaurants. The Jersey Shore. Yeah, yeah. baby. I just okay. boardwalks. Okay. But now, just shops. so you know, Mr. Governor, we're talking about South, like. You know, we're not talking about your big time boardwalks. Uh, okay. Okay. So, um, people are hitting them and killing them. Jesus. On purpose. No, it's not Jesus. It's the people. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm very concerned here. I'm, I'm being serious. I'm yeah. <clears throat> and the the turtles, when they get hit, they die. With the eggs inside them, With still. With the eggs inside them. What do you need me to do? They die. With I don't the like eggs it. Inside them, because some of them don't even get to lay their eggs. I hate this. It's a mess. Yeah. And so the roads look gross when it happens. Also, have you seen Mario? Have you seen the Super Mario video games? Yeah. If you hit a turtle, your car immediately goes into free spin and shoots off the side of the road. It's That's true. What I was Everyone knows this. Yeah. yeah. It's true. You know. Chris, who's the buffoon you brought with you? <laughs> <laughs> what? Are you closing the roads, Governor? Can we close the roads, Mr. For Governor? Uh, we would need to close them. From I know this is going to be a tough pill to swallow. Yep. Memorial Day weekend. Until about the 4th of July. Oh and my no, God. I'm not talking about no a rogue great that. white shark. Yeah. I'm talking about diamondback terrapins. Gems of the salt marsh. Chime in. Go ahead. Check, check. <laughs> um, listen, we could turn this into like kind of the Boston Marathon of turtles. Right? Ah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, oh, that's pretty smart. I'm finding I need to see bring more crowds so. out. Close the roads, but then we monitor... Legal that's right. We've got legal gambling. You yep. have to gamble on the turtles. Oh, that's uh -huh. real smart. I like Ooh, this a lot. This is yeah. really good. Chris, yeah. you have a deal, but here's what I want. Okay. Can I have someone just put a little dot of paint on the turtle shell so that I can, people can track their bets more easily? What do you think? Otherwise, the roads are staying open. Can it be? Yeah, it might come off, but could it be safe paint? Yeah, it's not going to be lead-based. I don't okay. want children licking it. I think we could do that. <laughs> I think it's a good We got a deal. Airshade. Yeah. Right, all right. Yeah. Close the roads. And that's You've how you it. debate. You've <laughs> charmed the governor. <laughs> um, the guy who's charmed the governor of nope, New turtle guy. 
Wrong. Well, dude, Chris. That's what I meant, the Garden State tortoise. You're an idiot. <laughs> we love Garden State Tortoise. <laughs> thank you guys so guys, much. Guys, thanks for, for hey, no, thank you guys. Thanks for taking care of our shelled friends. Really appreciate it. Kyle has set something up. We were supposed to be done, but we're not done, are we, Kyle? Not done. Nope. Oh. Kyle's done something. <laughs> guys, thanks hey. for coming on. All right, guys. We will yeah. see you for that yeah. shot at the bar, L. You too. Don't we'll be hiding see tonight. Ya. No, no yeah, hiding. Shot. Check one. Check one, two, two, three, four, five. Nope. Peters is dead. Eight, nine, hey, we have one more guest. We do. Mine's dead too. That's fine. No, yours check is good. One. I can hear yours. Check okay. One, two, From the speaker. Two. All right. Check, let's check. bring up a surprise guest. Three, Kyle has three, lined four, this up. Five, yeah, I don't know what's happening. Steve is coming on. All right. Steve. 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 Peter, what's up, buddy? Hey, I'm excited. We're you, almost done. Got to scoot in with us too. Oh yeah, come yeah. on, Jessica, come on up. Steve and Jessica. The behind the operation too, yeah. Yeah, which one are you? I'm the Mr. Write a Check. Gotcha. Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah. There <laughs> Mr. We write go. a Check and uh, Mr. White Write a Check's girlfriend slash wife. <laughs> Talking to the mic, we're about to have a delicious conversation. Oh, so perfect. <laughs> That's what we came here for. So what are you guys? You, what are you guys doing here, Steve? So we basically, I own a big pet store and have for years, and then four a, years. A ago, very big pet store. Yeah. To be clear, <laughs> can you elaborate before before you just skim over that? Can you maybe talk a little bit about yeah. that? Absolutely. So. When I was a kid, I liked everything animal-wise. I always told myself I'm going to, you know, own a zoo and build a pet store and do all these things. And that became a reality when I was 17. I worked for another guy. He said, I don't think you're ever going to make it in this industry. And it made me go, I'm going to open a store just out of principle now to show you I can. There you go. And that grew and grew and grew. And uh, four years ago, I decided that I needed to build a zoo, too. So then we started Perfect. this zoo project. Wow. So now we have... Probably roughly almost 300 animals. And here, right? It's in Orlando. Is that uh, right? I'm in St. Augustine, Florida. St. Augustine, which is yep. where from here? Uh, about yeah. two and a half hours north. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So, and then my shop's in Jacksonville. So, I kept them closed because I always feel like I'm at one place and then the next, constantly back and forth all day long. Yeah, so, yeah. Jessica pretty much manages the zoo all week long and keeps everything operational and going. And I keep the store rolling. Amazing. And What's the name of the zoo? Go. The zoo is called the Extreme Exotics Wildlife Foundation. Okay. Very so, cool. So, what kind of, uh, what have you got there? So, I have everything from. Whoa, well, hold on. All right. <laughs> hold on. Okay. Hold on. All right. Calm down. All right. Slow down. Okay. Relax. Chill. Jesus. I think. They can show us some of the things they have there. Oh I, that's, my goodness. That's what I think I saw Kyle smugly smuggling <laughs> to smugly the corner. Smuggly <laughs> smuggly smuggling. Jessica, can you can you show us anything? Yeah, I can. Definitely. Give me just a second. Ooh, I'm, gonna gonna I gotta, I'm gonna get off the stage. <laughs> He's what, scared. What is this? <laughs> Please, well, yeah, keep 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 telling us about it. Uh, yeah, oh my so, god! I mean, we have everything. We have That's everything from cage. cobras to saltwater crocodiles That's to clouded leopards. A cobra I mean. is coming, right? No. Yeah, That's what it's, yep. Oh, clouded nice. leopards. Yep. Where, now, so where do you get the leopards, for example? So they came from another facility. I had originally when I started this zoo, was my whole goal was wanted to work with clouded leopards. He's terrible. And uh, <laughs> uh, by the oh way, my I will give you a hundred dollars right now on air if you can name what that is. No, we have to first let the audience see it. It's a crunch bar. Not that, you oh. idiot. Oh, <laughs> well, you pointed at that. This is the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. Put her up here. There you oh, go. oh, my, my God. <laughs> God. What's your fatures? <gasps> Hi, sweetie. Here. Look at can the I, paws yeah. on this This lens. is, oh, my God. <laughs> you, this is, can I touch? Yeah, it's like the cutest. So this is a lynx? Yes. How old? Oh What's this? She is four months. She was born May 25th. Oh, she's so cute. Now, tell us her story. Tell us about the lynx. Tell us where she came from. So she's really cool. So she actually, there's only a few breeder Carpathian lynx left in the country. They're the hardest of all the lynx um, to breed. And she actually came from a breeder just in Dent, Michigan, just out, just basically outside of Canada. Look at that. Um, we had her transported all the way down here. <laughs> so her brother actually is at a zoo in West Palm Beach. Um, called Panther Ridge Conservation Center. Okay. And then Phoebe is with us. Phoebe, that's her name? Yep. Okay. Phoebe? Yep. Phoebe. Phoebe, Phoebe, Phoebe. And what, uh, okay, and how long have you had Phoebe? Because she's obviously not very old. So we she's got Phoebe at six toy. weeks no, old. I can tell. She knows where her bread gets buttered. <laughs> <in her life. laughs> she, she found our cat yeah. guy in about one second flat <laughs> and lay down in front of him. She's like, yeah. this is my Beautiful. place. Yeah, he <laughs> loves cats. It's yeah, That took no time at all. Sorry, and, please and, continue. And here we thought she was just going to knock everything off and just go wild and just went down and lay yeah, down. We're, we're good. finally figured it out. We're good. <laughs> hey, Phoebe. Um, wow. So, yeah, so, so how old is she? So she's four and a half months now. Four and a half months, and you've had her for three months. Yep. Yeah. Gotcha. Hi, she's got. So oh, Carpathians can vary. She's a female, so she'll stay smaller. So she'll probably be somewhere in the sixty to eighty pound range, where males can tower well over to a hundred. The biggest of all the wings. 
she's from the Carpathian Mountains mm -hmm. in Europe. Mm -hmm. it's, actually a subspecies so. it's a, of a, it's a lynx. Eurasian lynx. Yeah. yeah, it's a subspecies of it, which is the largest of the lynx. So okay. the Carpathian tends to be. Up so she's there. a big predatory cat, which is pretty impressive. Obviously, now she's just an adorable little snuggle bug. But will she get? Uh, like, are you gonna keep her? She oh yeah, no. We actually like when you first come on our property, we have this monster lynx enclosure with our two Eurasians. Yeah. That's like all built under the hundred-year-old oak trees, and everything goes up fourteen feet into the air. It's really cool. Because our two bigger ones, Ranger and Beth, are super cool. I mean, they're adults, but you can whistle. They'll come down from the trees, hop on your shoulders and stuff. So they're a lot of fun. How cool is that? The lynx are a really cool, like, medium-sized cat that get a really very good personality and disposition to them. So compared to – you've done a lot of cats, mm -hmm. obviously. I, I, I know that. But how do their – I don't know much about cats, cats in captivity as far as personalities go. What is uh, Eurasian lynxes? Check, check, they have a really great disposition to them. Now you have to still, you know, read the room, read their language, right. watch still, how they're it's acting. Still a wild cat. Yeah, and they this do. Not a house they cat. can be overstimulated very quickly, and you yeah. just have to give them a little bit of time to back down and just slow down, Buddy. and then they'll calm back down in their situation. But it's also they're a very disciplined animal that understands, you know, firm nose and listening and stuff like that. She's very bold. She's not scared of anything. She can do all this like it's no big deal she's not like having you know servals which you see a lot that can be a lot more shy about certain things and too much stuff happening in a room lynx are like oh you want me to jump over this wall you want me to run in here you want me to meet this you want me to do that they just don't have a care in the world about it's stuff hilarious. yeah mm -hmm. it's um it's interesting because this is probably really good for her it is it's because great stimulation. she's getting all the stimulation at such a young age mm -hmm. that it's not going to be overwhelming you know if you did this with an adult animal that never been in a setting like this it's going to Absolutely. And I think, you know, you see so much in the, the animal activists and, and side of the world where people hate when you do interactions with some of these cats. But the zoos that do when you have friendly animals, it's always easier. If we had to vet treat this cat, take blood from it, you know, look at anything, she trusts us. Yeah. That's a great thing. Yeah. When you have these animals no raised raise wild, yeah, yeah, it makes them panic, right. you know. I also, I mean, we've talked about this on our pod a lot. We're all very big proponents for, you know, captive raised, captive bred animals because it lets people fall in love. How many other times are you going to get a lynx Absolutely. to play with, you know? And somebody, some kid that comes here tomorrow might walk out of this hall and go, when I grow up, I'm going to be a lynx yep. biologist. I'm going to dedicate my life to saving lynxes because they got to play with her and meet her at your booth, you know? And that can change the fate of that 100%. Species. I can always start, but you can go to a zoo and never see an animal hiding in a cage, but you can spend 10 minutes interacting with an animal in the right environment, yeah. and it makes you have a completely different respect for, I want to save this species because after being around the species and getting to see it, this yeah. makes it. Turn your mic off. Yep. Unplug it. Plug it back in. Turn it back on. Got it. Um, that's <laughs> amazing. Do you guys have anything else to show? Oh, sure. We have plenty more. <laughs> Let's see a couple more things Please here. Please leave her with me. Don't take <laughs> <that. Sure>. Nothing's <laughs> topping that lynx. Yeah, right. <laughs> Kyle, any luck? Still on and off on this one. Sorry, we're having slight technical difficulties there. There, it's on All now. All day today. All right. Well, uh, it was. Better? I Good? Yeah. yeah. It doesn't even matter. We just had this lynx yeah, on the care. table. This I isn't wonder, for anybody no but us. Yeah, you guys can leave. It's for me. That was. No <laughs> one's listening. <laughs> what is she bringing out? Course. Peter, see how quickly you can identify this creature. Did you see the paws? Oh, Dude, those, the those paws, paws are enormous. So That's going to be a big kitty. Big yeah. kitty. Yeah. Hopefully you know what they say about us. big paws? <laughs> Big mouse. <laughs> I think yeah. I may see an African serval. Yes, that's a serval. Oh of boy. which this is a personal favorite of mine because I, I had two servals mm -hmm. growing up. So this is a. Uh, she'll probably be a little bit more timid, I would think. Oh we'll my see. God. Look at this mm -hmm. beauty right here. This is right. why I joined this podcast. Hi. For, for like this. <laughs> this is the cutest animal in existence. So, how old, Are you how old kidding is a serval? She's about the same age as Phoebe. They're about Four a week months. apart. She was born May 29th, so. What's her name? Uh, Sarabi. Sarabi. Very different disposition right off the so, bat. So, and what's very interesting is Sarabi is in the house with everything. She's with the Bengal cats, the Maine Coons, the dogs, the, the capuchin monkeys, all that stuff. Doesn't yeah. have a care less in the world about everything. <laughs> Phoebe, on the other hand, every single thing is edible to her. So it's she like, I don't care if it's the adult dog or yeah. the cat or this yeah. thing. She's like, I amazing? can eat that. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> so, you know, whoop. Good catch there, guys. <laughs> well, she's into beer. She likes fat tire. Um, so I, 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 we were talking about this earlier today, but I grew up uh, in southern Africa, in Zimbabwe, and when we were plowing one of our farms when I was a kid, we found two abandoned servals, right, Farah and Zuma, and we raised them to sub-adulthood, 
and then they went they just went back into the wild they just they literally grew up in the house like with our dogs with you know sleep in my bed everything and then basically when they were teenagers started spraying everywhere they just sort of slowly went back out in the wild um they were amazing animals i wouldn't really call them pets even though they were sort of pets you know they lived with us grew up with us but are the people that would come and visit us were terrified of them because they didn't like outsiders right and you've probably experienced this and uh even our giant rhodesian ridgebacks known as lion killers were scared of the servals yeah our my one main coon duchess our other lynx that we raised in the house and rangers 75 80 pounds she would push that lynx around to everything it had in him, and Ranger would just back off that cat like, I ain't getting no near way. that little thing. I yeah. don't know what that Maine Coon does, but I'm not doing it. Crazy. Crazy. Wow. Well, even she as is an adult, beautiful. When he, at, his, at his size now, he backs down to her. Really? Yep. <laughs> oh, you're Doesn't kidding. care. Oh, but they wow. are funny. In my house, our other big server we raised, Kona, I had to put a sign up that said, ha- it would always be like zero days since last spray incident, <laughs> where somebody <laughs> yeah. we could spray, like yeah. new part would come to the house, we'd be watching TV, and walk over and spray you. I'm like, servals are such a How big is your house? Can I ask you uh, in my house, is like 2,800 square feet. Okay, that's yeah. a pretty big house. Yeah. So you got space. We, and we ever... keep adding to it is the problem. Now yeah. we're like, we should put this sunroom on because, you know, there needs to be a monkey room. And, uh... Uh, of course. Who doesn't need <laughs> yeah. a monkey room? Yeah, you need a monkey room. Yeah, you got to have a monkey with, room. With a trampoline <laughs> floor. Yes. <laughs> it must have um, a trampoline has sur- floor. Has the four-month-old servo ever just bit you as hard as she could? No, she plays rough with me. It's so funny. I Everybody in the that. house, she's like, I love oh my it. god, I want to play with them. Me, she just stalks all the time. I come out of the house, she beelines to grab my leg and grab this and bite my toes <laughs> on, all yeah, the time. But she never fully latches on. Right. And I gotta say, I mean, I have been bit by some little cats. You know, these little exotics. And man, when they clamp on and it latch hurts. on, you're oh, like prying them off. Crazy. You couldn't believe yeah. the strength they have. Whoa! Mm-hmm. Scary paper! All right, move we can we whoa, put whoa, a little whoa, whoa. away. Whoa, whoa. Can, we, can we see one more thing? Not yeah, that these aren't cool. I mean, we could obviously like one, spend six, six hours. Yeah. Well, whatever, whatever you guys want to show us, this is great. Thank you, by the no, way. No, no problem. Yeah. Do you have any full-grown brown bear? <laughs> yes, we'll just have to get that out of the back of the car real quick. Okay. <laughs> well, let's see what else. Peter, look over there. Yeah. How quickly can you identify this next creature? <laughs> you have five seconds. Okay. Well, I guess. Well, look at this. Oh, side. there's there's zero zero chance. Actually, nobody no. say what it is. This is, this is an <laughs> anteater of some oh. type. God damn it. He's learned so much. <laughs> He's learned a lot. He's like, we need to replace him with someone dumber now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Um, Sorry you booted off the Kyle, panel. Kyle, you're in. You're tagged in. <laughs> Look at this guy. So this so, is Bam Bam. Hey, Bam Bam. <laughs> you want to feel some sharp yeah. claws? No, you I don't. don't. Mind, right? No, 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 not at all. Oh, <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> Hi. Hey, you stinky, musky little bug. Mean. They're like personable. <laughs> What's going on Holy. with this mic cutting in and out? Although Forrest calling it stinky and musty wasn't very nice. No. <laughs> no. Wait, till, wait till you have him on you. Forrest yeah. has been complaining about anteaters since three years ago when we let started me, this podcast. Let, let me see. Yeah. 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 Just lift him up like a baby. Okay, like, you, you have small children. <laughs> I got him. There you go. Oh, big boy. Look at that. All right. Tell us where'd this anteater come from? Dude, he's so chill. So he is actually a captive-born baby. He was produced by our friends over at Moore's Exotic Animal Ranch. They're actually in where are they, Lakeland. Is mm-hmm. that where she's from? Um, but he's captive-born and bred, so he's very, very Peter. Sweet. He was used he as an educational you. animal from his breeder, yeah. and his parents were educational animals. So he's, you know, second-generation captive animal that has been used for educational shows, and he they're really all likes, very sweet. He likes to get into the crevices, doesn't yes. he? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he went hard on. Uh, Kyle's <laughs> ear earlier. I actually watched his tongue go in one ear and slightly stick yeah, out, the came out the other. Yeah, yeah. I how, how much you want to bet Pat wants nothing to do with no, this? No, he must. I'm you, concerned. You must. I'm He's concerned, concerned about uh, Jeremiah seeing the anteater. Who's Jeremiah? Oh yeah, <laughs> Jeremiah left. The bullfrog. So there's an anteater in the house. No, the ant, the the lights no, camera ants. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, Pat is terrified. He won't touch. <laughs> no, nothing about me that's terrible. Th- this <laughs> this animal is better than your cat and dog combined. Look at the claws on it. Is it fully tail. grown? No, Look so at this he's tail. a baby. He's only four months old. Full grown, he'll be about two and a half feet with the tail. Wow, and, and that's what, a like big boy. 40 pounds? Just about, yeah, yeah. 35, 40 pounds. Yeah, they're interesting. And there's, I think, is this right, nine species? Mm-hmm. Eight species, something yep, like that? Something like that. Yeah. And a lot of people don't know it. These guys are actually closely related to sloths, so they're yeah. in the same family. I could see that now that I've had one on me. Yeah. <laughs> cool, huh? Like yeah. a spiky, musty baby. I- incredibly friendly. Do they stay friendly as they get older, even? If they're hand yeah. they yeah. definitely. Yeah, they're handy, of course. If you handle them frequently, yes, but they, they can, there's going to be really mean ones. Dude, they're cr- like <laughs> really? the, the giant anteater, which is a, a relative of theirs, of course, from South America, will shred jaguars. 
Yeah. What? Like a jaguar yeah, those, will attack. Yeah, with that's those claws, crazy. They'll shred up a jaguar. Like a jaguar will not mess with a giant anteater for the for the most part. Which so what's the crazy. smell of our new hats? Yeah. Yeah. I'm really into it. Look at uh, those. What do they eat? No, I'm just kidding. So you obviously <laughs> feed them ants. Do you got? Do you like? Do you like just send them out to the ant hills so in the yard or what? Wait till you succeed this diet. <laughs> so in captivity, they have a very specialized diet. We have to blend his food every night. So we do a pre mix of the dry form of the food, which is insectivore uh, formula from Zoologic, and then vitamin K tablets, taurine, and collagen. Wow. So we mix all the dry food, and then we mix the wet part daily. Yeah. We basically make like a smoothie with water, eggs. This is one water, lucky like animal water. right here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is taurine? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you add like a dash of taurine. Uh, is that that's the key ingredient in Red Bull. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. Caffeine and taurine. He was drinking sugar-free Monster. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, he hasn't really kicked in yet, so you yeah. just got to get yeah. a little yeah. bit of he's, time. He's, he's, he's actually usually the pace of a sloth. He's, this, just, he's just wired. Like, if I just had one of him crawling around my, uh, like in my office on my desk all day, I'd be like, yeah, it's better than staring at a fish tank. Oh, he's scratching If you'd like to uh, <laughs> purchase a new Wild Times hat with Anteater. Uh, <laughs> These are special edition now. Yeah. Yep. Dude, I love how, they like, how. Up in price now, I they think. really should. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Absolutely. He's literally, like, so grabbing everything. things and just. Oh, this is awesome. That's very cool. This is awesome. He's on the hunt. Look at him. Sniffing around. This is so great. Do you guys have anything else you yeah. want to share with us? We'll take it. I love this. This is highly enjoyable. Look yeah, at this really tail. Is. The tail looks like a snake. Yeah, look at that. Look at the modeling. Yeah, It's dude. actually prehensile. Oh, oh really? Yeah. I'll, I'll hold you. Come here. You oh, my God. Billy. Look at that. It just wrapped around the Hi. microphone cord say there. Something? Say something? Dude. I love the wet nose. I always love I know, the, the wet nose. Hey, it's a sign Hello. of a healthy animal. Hello. <laughs> oh, oh, right yeah, in right there. in the ear. Oh. Dude, I bet, in, in. I bet that feels good. <laughs> it, it, like, blocked out my hearing. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. oh, my goodness. <laughs> She'll grab him. But oh, my God. What a beautiful animal. Ooh, that Seriously. That, 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 give me, yeah. yeah. That was like smelling salts for the year. Do we yeah, that woke me oh, up. Oh, here we go. You. you hold on oh, to those two go. for a minute so you can talk about some glops. Oh, they are galops. I was looking very closely. Are so this Galapagos? is a full-size Galapagos tortoise. Uh, yeah, weird. yeah. <laughs> I've seen them. Hi, buddy. Can I put it here? So, Peter, these are like fern, the Galapagos tortoise. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh my oh, goodness. He knocked the hat right off. He's just going to want to steal. Oh, let's give it to him. He's beelining it, it. Yeah. Bee it for the hat. Well, don't <laughs> let him go off the table. The tortoise will not do well if he goes off the table. Hi, oh, buddy. look at this. I'm um, um. Yum, yum. There, bud. Oh yeah. What's uh? What's the rhino iguana's name? This is dude. Dude. What's up, dude? His name, that's what you can say. What's up, dude? We got dude man like here. Oh yeah, look at him. This he's is like, great. He's like, he's like, f the inside. I'm gonna eat the skin and everything. <laughs> here comes so, the tortoise. You got uh, a tortoise head. Are these? Away. Tell me about your galops Quickly. here. Are they at the zoo? Or are they? Yeah. So we actually have. Them? So these two are available. Yeah. Um, but we do have big ones at the zoo. But which are those tortoises? These are like. It's like a couple thousand bucks, right? Yeah, about yeah. 3,500 bucks is yeah. what they run. Yeah, yeah, surprisingly, they've actually wow. come down for what they were. They used to um, be more? Oh, yeah. Just because of the breeding? Yeah, there, there's so much successful Hi, captive breeding now that they've actually become to where, like, the outside the zoo world can start raising a galop and stuff if they wanted to, which oh, is neat. Oh, I didn't neat. know that. Yep. That's interesting. How big do these these bad boys get? Like 600 pounds? <laughs> yes. What species are these? Huge. You know? um, I don't know the exact subspecies. They just these do galop. That's like yeah. what you yeah. get, and they don't really go into... What the subspecies they are, right? so these guys that produce these now have them all genetically broken down by bloodlines oh, or where they come and, and they all that. Mix it and keep it diverse. Absolutely, and, you know, they, yeah, with all the zoos and everything. Color and size and. Yeah. And it's so fun. I mean, they grow so fast. I mean, like last year's baby is this big. Our five-year-olds are 100 pounds already, wow. and they're so funny. They're in a pen, like at the barnyard, and the goats just ride the big galops around all day long. <laughs> awesome. Dude, it's, it, it's it's the thing we talk about on the podcast. You know, I don't get as much exposure to the animals as you do, obviously, Forrest, and you when you're shooting out there, Pat. But it really does change it to have it in front of you and see the physical animal. It's, like, incredible. Pictures don't do it justice. That's like, why I, it's, we'll watch him there. I it's, got it. it's why I always say this, like, you know, we talked about this earlier, but, like, captive bred stuff is so important. So yes. People can fall in love with them, connect with them, see them like this. I mean, it, it is I, I was watching. I thought he was just going to like chill in there. No, I know. I was trying to get him to eat. I thought he was hungry. Look at ah. this guy. Look at dude. Yeah. Oh, he's eating the peel. <laughs> That's all he's wanted all day long was a banana. Dude, dude. <laughs> he's going to town on it. He, he looks like Peter at a spaghetti restaurant. <laughs> it was like Peter last night with his White Castle. Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Taco Bell, White Castle. 
And how long have you had the rhino iguana? So I've always, do, I've always beautiful, wanted a rhino. Beautiful. So they're great. You just have Everybody to get through the rhino iguana terrible twos because from <laughs> like they're born to like two years old, they're like spaz all the time, never sit still, drive you nuts. And then all of a sudden they just wake up one day and they look at you like, oh, I like you. know, I could just sit and here and hang out chill. if you want. And you're like, oh, finally. And this yeah. is every yeah. rhino iguana I've ever seen, I've never seen him in that, that juvenile phase you're mentioning, is like this. Yep. You're just you always like, see the big ones. And, and everybody goes, I want that. Like, hey. Where are the rhino iguanas native to? So they're like this set of Caribbean islands. So like it's been and everything down there. And okay. then you have all kinds of different iguanas from different sister islands where you see like the Cuban rock iguanas and the true like pure blue Lewis iguanas. Yeah. And they're cool because, I mean, they live up to 60 years, which there is really go. neat. Yeah, yeah. 60? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. That is long lived. Oh, my goodness. So I think Wait even Terry guy. over there, he has some that are documented into the mid 60s on some of the animals oh, that no he way. owns. Yeah, it's crazy. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, so, so, I mean, dude, at five sharing. years old, a baby. Nice. Uh, so he, nice. Dude's five, you said? Yep. So he just stopped being a prick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he's, about the last year, he's been starting to do these events and great where he just doesn't go anywhere. I love it. I love it. Well, this is awesome, guys. Well, so I just have one que last question. Sure. So when the little serval started to fall, she just she got me a little bit. Oh, yeah. Is she it, nailed is you. Is it true that I will now like wake up in the morning with the jumping ability of a serval? Most likely. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can already see you're starting to get hairier. The hair's kind of out of place I and everything. It. And yeah. It'll kick okay. in tomorrow. You're getting a Hugh Jackman-esque yeah. look to you now. You're one to nice. talk. You yeah. might be a little bit more hissy tomorrow, you know, so we'll just see oh, how it great. goes. You oh, know? great. He's going to be more, more hissy. hissy. Yeah. That's what we need. That's if he wakes up before 12 p.m. <laughs> so we'll see. <laughs> No, it's uh, fine. Well, it's guys, fine. thanks so much oh, for that. Dude, this thank you so much. No pleasure. Worries. Way to end the show, um, honestly. Yeah, fantastic end to our day. <laughs> Tell people where they can come and visit your zoo and everything like that, that that are watching this. And, by the way, you can come down to Animal Con tomorrow or Sunday, meet all of these wonderful animals. You can go in yourself and meet the cats. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah, yeah, we have awesome yes. meet and greets tomorrow, lots of cool stuff. We'll have even more stuff tomorrow. Um, our facility is in St. Augustine, Florida. It's called the Extreme Exotics Wildlife right. Foundation. We're everything from YouTube to Facebook. Facebook to Instagram, you can find us. If not, we're here all weekend. We'll be the ones with all the cool, crazy stuff running around. <laughs> awesome! Thank you, guys. Thank you Thank so you. much. Absolutely, buddy. Anytime. Thanks to everyone Thank who hung you. out. Thanks to anyone Thanks who watched. Thanks for bringing Thank these animals out. Thank you guys for tuning out. in. Thank you, everybody, will... especially you guys who sat here the we'll whole day. We'll be back day. tomorrow. We'll be... I don't know we'll... why you did that, but thank you. <laughs> what time are we coming back? We'll be back tomorrow at noon. Nope. 11, 11 a.m. Eastern. Live for four more 11 hours. 11 mid to midnight. 11 a.m. No, 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 Kyle. I mean, forest. Forest stop. <laughs> It'll be 11 a.m. Eastern to 3 p.m. Eastern. And 11 a.m. Eastern is what Pacific? Eight. Eight. Well, oh, my so God. Shit. Thank you, you everybody, do. for tuning yeah. in. Good night. Love you all. Hate you, too. Ugh. All right.